Yeah, the mic does work. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this very special Twitch stream today. We are doing this because we passed 2,500 followers on Twitch, and it was actually a couple weeks ago, and we're almost at another collaboration stream. But for this one, we are going to have fun with all six roommates here at Von House, and the way that we're going to set it up is <laughs> we're going to have each roommate gets a half hour, and we're each going to go through a different medium that we are going, I guess we have three digital and three traditional, is that it? I think so. Oh. Depending on Key, she's going to do a little gouache practice before her turn. So essentially, uh, what we're going to talk about today is our own experiences in connection with success and failure, what that means to us, and hopefully help you guys uh, if you have some kind of a relation to the way you feel about success and failure or how to overcome it. So we're going get, to get right into it. Essentially, each of us are going to have, actually it's going to be like 28 minutes each and then two minutes for the swap. So we're going to start with me and then we're going to go down the line. So we'll, Ashley will be in the half hour, then Gabe, and then Tyler. Actually, we're in the right order. And then Sean, and then Keith. Yeah, oh, that's weird. I promise we didn't plan that, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, so thank you again for coming to the stream. I'm going to do a few announcements. So thank you guys for standing behind me for the first part. <laughs> and you'll see all of them very shortly. All right, so the announcements on CG Cookie. We have... Uh, the contest coming out, and it is no longer just a false thing that I keep telling you every week during the summer. It is starting tomorrow. So for those of you guys who have been waiting for it, it is actually coming, and it is coming tomorrow. And we have all the banners ready for it. We've been testing, and I'm really excited because not only are the doubles prize or the prizes doubled, but I also got a lot of good guest artists to be judges, ones that even I look up to, and I'm glad that they are going to be a part of the judges panel so look forward to that it will start tomorrow sometime probably around 2 p.m central time and you can see all the info on that tomorrow um, my books finally came in for those of you who backed me on my kickstarter they finally came in i am going through a shipping process of doing about 20 every day so if you ordered from me know that it will be arriving within the next few weeks and thank you guys for ordering even on etsy and if you want to order one for yourself there's a link below there is a September community critique stream happening every Wednesday night in September. So if you want your work critiqued by me, just there's a link below and you can submit your work to be critiqued. Bless you. And then every night on Wednesday, so after our normal Twitch streams, I will be doing a stream on cgcookie.com, which I will be then critiquing your submissions. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to announce. Um, oh no, nope, the other thing is a secret still at CG Cookie, and I guess the last thing is me and Key are hosting Draltober, if you want to know more information about that, there's a link below, essentially if you guys are wanting to challenge yourself for a daily drawing challenge, we're doing a Halloween based challenge, we have our calendars all set up, and uh, we are going to be not only partaking in it obviously, but we have our own channel, we're going to be hosting you guys as well, so you can find our Instagram link to that below. Okay. So I'm going to do quick shout outs. So if you guys want to put where you're watching from, I will do that. And then I will go ahead and get started with uh, my own little doodle here. Oh, let me move this over. Okay, so let me do the quick shout outs. Woo! Uh, oh, there's a lot. Okay. Uh, Ella from Sweden. <laughs> uh, Faithful from the underworld. Well, hello from down yonder. Uh, Art Faithfully from Mississippi, Kratos from Columbia, Brandon Paints from California, uh, Auxilian from Italy, One of the Dundane from Belgium. Well, hello, we're going to be there in a month and a half. Yushin from Serbia, T -T Sergio from Salem, Oregon, Gregorius from Indonesia, Morla from Germany. Oh, hi, Morla, how are you doing? Um, Hezeti from Northern California, Namtaru from the cornfields of Illinois. Well, I'm oh. glad to get internet reception in the cornfield. Uh, Gypsy from Southern Oregon. Hello, Gypsy. Uh, Ian Green from Washington. Alan Green. I don't know why I keep saying that. I am sorry. It's like my instant response when I see I-A-N. I think Ian, even though it's Alan, that I is an L. Uh, Miss Chibi from Michigan. Hey, Miss Chibi, how are you doing? Chloe from Spain. <laughs> yeah, you said it like I would. Uh, Isabel from Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, yes, we did have a dance party stream last night on Key's stream, and me and Sean were teaching one of my friends that just moved to Waukesha how to dance, because he doesn't know how to dance, and we were just showing him that you don't need to know how to dance, you can just do random motions and pretend like you know the beat, right? Um, is Ibazel from Saudi Arabia, uh, John Miller from Indiana, hi John, Art of Nicole from Switzerland, Christy, hello, Toga Ochi from Germany, Wade from, I'm assuming that's Missouri? Yeah, that's Missouri. Um, Tremboozled from Canada. Tigital from Under Key's Bed. Christy from Portland. Excuse me? Carl from Mexico. Spyro from Ohio. Ooh, Ohio. That's where Sean likes to claim he's from. Ed Squared from California. Oh, it's New Jersey. Vamira from Spain. And Zubu from the Netherlands. Or Zoibu from the Netherlands. Okay. So I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to be working traditionally today. And I think the first three are actually traditional and the last, the first three are traditional, last three are digital. So that's, uh, you know what, you know what, it's just, it's a mess on the back end with the roommates. We're going to go as we go, but I know for sure I'm doing traditional. I'm going to switch over to my camera here. Okay. So, and uh, each of the roommates agreed they're really nice. And we're each going to do one of the swordplay characters of our choice, but that's not the point of what we're talking about today. We're talking about success and failure. So my little cheat sheet, I'm going to first state, well, I'm Tim. Nice to meet you. I work at CG Cookie, and then I'm a con artist on the side. I prefer working, I would say traditional is my number one favorite medium. And then digital would be, uh, it used to be a close second, but I feel like it, it's slowly fading. And I, I really do enjoy more of the traditional aspects of drawing now. And what character and in what media? So I'm going to be working on Tracy. I'm going to explain why I'm picking this character to work on. And I'm going to be working with a 0.2 graphite mechanical pencil. It's an HB, so not too dark, not too light. Uh, I'm not going to be working with this one today. And then a mono eraser and a kneaded eraser. I might switch over to a 2B traditional pencil. We'll see if I want to make it a bit darker. But since I'm on a con time constraint, I don't want to... Um, push it. I really want to discuss what's more important, and that's on talking about success and failure today. So if you guys have any questions while we're going, I'm going to, I don't have a moderator for me, but I will be the moderator for all the other roommates, and I can help answer the questions, but it would be easier for me to know which are questions versus just random comments if you put at CG Cookie Concept before it. Why, well, thank you, Carlo Lato, for following. Okay, so hold on. Let me... I'm going to move the mic down. So what I'm going to do is first kind of create a base for myself. Now, sometimes I go back and forth on how I approach a traditional drawing. Sometimes I'll go straight into doing like quick sketches, getting the shape of the head down or whatever. If, in this case, I'm doing more of a bust. So maybe like doing some preliminary shapes. But there are other times I just kind of jump into it. I usually work a bit slower but then I can have fun kind of finding the proportions as I go along here. And there's a lot of trust that I'm giving myself in trying to find the proportions based on the knowledge I have of it rather than going off of the pre-shapes. So why am I doing Tracy? Tracy to me is the most confident character I've ever created and uh, part of the reason I want to do her, because when I think of success, when I think of someone that is successful, I always think of the attitude and the attitude of that person. So for me, Tracy is a very confident person. And in a weird way, she creates her own success. It might not be th the definition that most people have of it, but in her life, in the life that she's living, she's a very successful person at what she does and how she lives. And part of the thing with Tracy that I always wanted to kind of showcase is she's definitely promiscuous in a lot of ways, but she's very confident of the way she looks and the way that she handles herself. But it, it has a very negative uh, flux on people where they judge her and they think they presume a lot of things about her just based on how she acts and looks. And she almost, and I know it's that age old thing of like, she doesn't care. But she does care. She actually wants people to talk about her. It's like one of those celebrities that likes any 
type of news, bad or good, as long as they're talking about them. So she's a bit of a egocentric person, and I think uh, with all of my characters, they do have a bit of myself within them, and if I was honest with you, there are times where I do feel I do relate with Tracy. And then there is a lot of the negative feedback that comes with Tracy as well. And I think sometimes with overly confident people, other people feel the need to knock them down or bring them back to earth and ground them. And some people need it. So I, I do admit, even sometimes with me, I think, actually, I think out of all of us, Key does the best job of like knocking me back down and making me remember what's really important with art. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> um, but then I feel like with some people, they are just genuinely confident and they're, they don't pass that threshold of arrogance. And I think there's still hate being thrown their way or this negative energy being thrown their way. And I think it is a bit of jealousy on whoever's throwing it. So hold on. Let me, I'm going to put the shape here of the head. Because if I, if I don't do the shape of the head right, her whole, whole rest of the drawing might collapse here. So then I have pre-written some questions here and I'm going to ask all the roommates on this and give their best explanation of it. So the first one is, what does success look like to you? To me, when I think of success, it's someone that isn't afraid. They're not afraid of failure. They take risks. They put whatever goal they have in front of them or whatever they set for themselves and then they attack it in whatever way they know best. And there's someone that does fail a lot. So when I think of someone that's successful, I think of a, someone that's failed a lot. And the only way that they got to the point they are now is because they were willing to be in that position to fail. And with art, sometimes it can be a bit tricky because we have to support ourselves financially. And I think that's where, well, thank you for following. I think that's where sometimes we get caught in these traps of balancing our artistic integrity versus financial security. And it's something that we'll all have to battle. And it's something that... Um, I think I've seen firsthand and something that I continue to not only see, but I get to see how different people uh, treat it and how they go about um, feeling secure financially and still being able to do the art that they want to create. And it's been really inspiring seeing people do it and actually be able to support themselves and uh, in whatever means possible. So the other thing that success looks like for me is when someone not only sets out the goal, but I feel like the journey to get to that goal. And I think part of the reason is I've hit a lot of the goals that I've wanted to back when I was in college. An example was I, I really, I mean, a smaller one would be like, I really wanted a daily deviation on DeviantArt. And I know that's something that might seem like something really small, but to me, that was a big deal. And uh, once I got it, yeah, I had that really cool feeling, but it was still on a fan art piece. But eventually I got to the point where uh, I got one of my originals as a daily deviation. And it felt pretty good, but it didn't really change me. There was nothing that you don't have this like life-changing moment where now that you've done it, you can like you've hit the next level. If anything, life goes on and sometimes you forget that that even happened. And I think the best example for me was Imagine FX. For the longest time I worked in the library and I would always see the new Imagine Effects. Every time it came in, I had to like put the label on the bottom right corner and uh, take the old one out. And I always wanted to be in the magazine because I would look through it every single time. And I was like, you know what? One day I'm going to be in this magazine. So then I started submitting for it about two years ago. And I was denied quite often. <laughs> but then eventually I got accepted. And even the acceptance letter that they gave me, I thought I was still rejected. It was a very vague uh, email, I have to admit. So I thought I was just rejected again, only to find them to send me a copy. Why, thank you, Seb SN, for following. Uh, only to have them send me a magazine, and I was actually on the, not only the inside cover, but I had a four-page spread. And it was a really cool feeling, but immediately I didn't feel any wave of triumph, or like, I made it, or this was it, this is the end goal. Like, it was just another... I guess, tick in the mark of goals that I want to hit. And the hardest part for me at that point in my life was realizing I had to keep making new goals and that the goals that I set for myself back in college, that I would be able to hit them and that I started to hit them. 
But if you don't have any long-term goals set out for yourself, eventually you're going to hit all the goals that you set out when you're younger and you kind of settle for just that. So having m new goals to continually inspire you to keep working, I think is a must for artists to succeed. All right, the next question is the times I felt most successful. Why, well, thank you, BB House, for following. And <laughs> Hyrulison, oh, that was really bad. Uh, but thank you for following. Um, times I felt most successful. I would say, actually, it was my first Kickstarter book. Not my second one, it was the first one. It was the first time I took a chance on making a collection of traditional sketches, which at that time, I wasn't sure if people would buy. I was only selling digital stuff at conventions, and I really wanted my own sketchbook because I saw a bunch of people at Spectrum had their own sketchbook that you could buy alongside their bigger pieces. So I, I was just thinking to myself, you know what, that's something I want to do for myself and my work. And I was in a kind of a sad place in my life. I was very self-pity at that point. And I remember at night, I would just work on this. And I would do this, I think, for like four or five weeks. I thank you, nobody else, for following. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I feel like you set me up just to say that. <laughs> um, yeah, he's good. That was great. Stream over. Stream over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, credits roll. Let's get out of here. <laughs> this is the height of career. Um, so it was at that time in my life where I really wanted more than what I was at. At that time, I felt like I was capable of doing so much more, and I was holding myself back, I think, before then because I wasn't sure. I was afraid that my book wouldn't sell and people wouldn't back it on Kickstarter. And then I would have, I know some of you might have seen other artists go through that slump of not having their Kickstarter raise the sufficient amount of money that they need. And they go kind of on that list of artists that didn't quite make it on Kickstarter. And I think that's the reason I postponed it for so long. But hitting that goal, I think for me was the probably the number one time I can think of when I actually felt successful and something that I, I set out to do, it worked and it, I felt accomplished. So yeah, I would say that was the time I felt most successful. And I guess this year doing conventions has really been a crazy wild ride where I, I didn't realize that having traditional prints being the main thing that you're selling could be your moneymaker. And having switched over from doing some fan art and buttons and all this other stuff to having a primarily traditional booth with just my sword play being my colored prints being sold, so all original, it was this crazy transition where I got a lot of support from people and a lot of people were buying it that I, I got to actually talk with and they would ask me about my drawings and they would ask the meaning behind them or they would, even with my sword play stuff, they would ask who are these characters and it felt really good. So that, I would say, is my number two. Uh, how do I believe you achieve success? This is what I was talking about earlier. I think you have to have the right attitude before anything. Because art is so vague and wide, and there's so many routes of income that you could achieve with art that I don't think there is one set way to follow. And I know that there's some artists that will tell you how they got really popular or how they got financially secure and that's great because that's one example that you can use for yourself and maybe that will be the one the path that you follow down but oftentimes I feel like the artists that really make it are the ones that carve their own path yeah they might see a path similar to theirs and they might take some of the same routes but for the most part you're still carving your own way through so I think attitude has a lot to do with it and believing in yourself and I think the ones that are the most successful are the ones that really believe not only in themselves but th what they're doing Okay, so then moving on to the other half. And trust me, guys, I definitely will. I know you guys are doing a lot of questions here. Or maybe I'll just nail out a few. Um, I'm doing the character Tracy. Um, <laughs> wait, what are you doing? I'm going to moderate you after her Okay. <laughs> Key's going to be my moderator. Um... So while we're waiting for her, and then she'll ask me some questions that you guys might have. Uh, what does failure look like to me? 
To me, failure is very simple. Failure is someone that doesn't try. If they don't try, there's no way that they can possibly succeed. It's that quote that a lot of people I know don't like, but I feel like it does hold some uh, weight to it. It's the idea that you miss all the shots you don't take. And in art, Just keep shooting some a lot of it comes down to not only shoot, not only going for it, but realizing you're not going to make every shot. And then when you don't make it, when you miss, not to get down on yourself, not to instantly think that, well, everything else is now out of order and I can't make it as an artist. Um, here, I'll move the... But hold on, let me get through my other two questions here. Um, so this next one is times where I felt like the most of a failure. Uh, I would say there's been a few cons that I've been rejected from that definitely make me feel like a failure. And I think one of the most prominent ones, and I, I feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like cursed with this one, is Daishokan. I cannot get into Daishokan. And it's in my backyard. It's in Wisconsin. I really want to go to it. But every year I just keep getting denied. And I think it's a reminder that uh, I still have to work for it. There's no point in your art career where all of a sudden you should just assume you get accepted into cons. And even with next year, as we're signing up for all these other cons, you can't just assume that because you were in it last year, you're going to be in it this year. And a lot of them are juried nowadays, and you really want to show them that you've been doing new stuff or that you have more product to sell. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's going to be some other artist that's up and coming that's going to take your spot. There are some cons, though, that, that like Dragon Con, they... they uh they skip artists on purpose to keep the pool fresh. Right. Oh, yeah. So if you got in last year, like in, the, in Key's case, if you got in, she got in last year, this year they, they don't accept people that got in last year. Unless you're already a really big crowd pleaser. Um, just to keep the pool fresh. <clears throat> Which makes sense. Yeah. Never feel like you can take something for granted uh, in terms of making money as an artist. And then the last one I have is how do you utilize failure? So I think it's very obvious is that you need, I believe you have to fail and you have to take every failing experience as an opportunity for you to learn from it and grow from it. And oftentimes it's not easy. It's very easy to say it, but as an example, and uh, my friend Kat says I can use this as an example and she doesn't care. But uh, two years ago, me and my friend Pui, we were doing cons and we've been doing them for a while. And then we brought in one of my friends who's a personal trainer in with us. And she just does some painting on the side. She doesn't take it too seriously. But she decided to paint a bunch of Pokemon portraits and sell them at the con that we were going to. And at this con, after it was over, she destroyed us. She made way more than myself or Pui. And actually, she almost made more than both Pui and me combined. And it was one of that those humble pills that not only do you have to take, but you really have to take it in stride where, yeah, you, of course you're going to take it personally. And then you're going to throw out excuses as to why this person did better. And you're, you're giving yourself all these outs of why that happened when really like hindsight, I think it took me like a month and I was talking with Pui and I was like, you know what? We need to do more of what she's doing. Not so much selling the Pokemon stuff, but the way that pre she presented herself at the con, she was very energetic she definitely created this aura of wanting to go up to talk to her. She would bring people to her booth just with a smile. And I had to learn from that. And now I stand behind my booth. I always, I never am doing anything besides just waiting to talk with new people. And I took an experience that could have easily demotivated me. And I saw an opportunity to grow from it. But yeah, I think at first it is a little hard sometimes to take that humble pill and realize what can I learn from this rather than just throwing excuses as to why uh, that happened. And that's it. Okay, so then, because we started 10, or we started eight minutes technically late. So I still have eight minutes. So if you want to ask me any questions here, I questions. and then I'm going to keep drawing because I have not been paying attention to Tracy. Okay. Uh, okay, here's you haven't mine. answered any questions yet? No. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to go. I am not that. says, I've started dabbling a bit with traditional after many, many years. What's wrong with me? Is there any way I can fix that and get back to digital. Just do digital. It's yeah, a part <laughs> of it is like, I well, thank you for following. I think a part of it has to do with where is your passion? Maybe it really isn't in digital as mm -hmm. much anymore. 
I thought my passion wasn't digital all through college and even after. And it wasn't until about three years ago that I realized I really enjoy traditional. And I had to kind of follow what I felt was the right path. And oftentimes I think I tend to follow what is a more secure path when in reality, I, it's proven to myself over and over, when I follow what I feel is the right path, it always turns out to be the best. And even if I fail, I'll never regret it. I always am like, well, at least I tried it and now I know it didn't work and I can try something new. But if you always have that in the back of your head of, well, maybe this is something I want to do, but uh, I just, I don't know if I'm willing to take that risk right now. then you're always going to question that for the rest mm -hmm. of your life, in my opinion. So I would say always at least try. Right. All right, sorry. I'll try to keep my answer shorter as I... Yeah, Tim. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. As TV artist, do you have any tips for business cards? I need to make some for myself, and I'm open for tips yeah. and thoughts. Considering I'm voted, I think, one of the worst business cards, I don't know if I'm the best, but <laughs> the way that I look at a business card, and I always think of, like, well, how would I treat it if someone handed me a business card? I just want, like, a quick handle. Mm -hmm. Give me whatever handle that you are prominent on, and that's all I really need, and then maybe art on the back. Yeah. If it's really easy to decipher... Those are my favorite types of business yeah, cards. Yeah, I don't like it when business cards have too much information. I like more images than text. So, especially for if you're an artist, <laughs> if your card's all text and no art, then you're not really representing what you're doing on your business card. So, make yeah, sure. Yeah, I have two examples. Have my first art. one was just image on one side and then Vaughn on the other with a gold foil. Mm -hmm. Now, I liked it, and it was yeah. very vague, and I would... Just have to like if someone was like well where do i follow you i would just write my handle underneath so i actually kind of like these they just turned out to be too expensive but i decided to settle and on my new ones i have at von art under it and then i still have an image on the other side very simple these are throwaways anyways i think people put too much emphasis on business cards right. when really when i go to meet an artist i feel like i remember their name i don't even need to look at their business card and i'll just look them up on instagram at night but you should still have them <laughs> yeah, business cards are important, but don't spend a million dollars on them because people are just going to take them and put them in their pocket or lose them. And yeah, that not... was a mistake I made with the gold foil one. If anything, it's yeah, a cool card and people might remember it, but you'd rather be remembered for your art rather than for your business card. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see. Ella says, which one of your characters did you create first? Um, technically, swordplay was something that was created by me and two other of my friends in grade school. So I feel like six of them were actually created all at the same time. So with me, my first two characters were Tim and Christina. Why, well, thank you, uh, oh Kamikaze1404 for following. Um, Tracy was actually one of the first ones. She was created by my friend Nate, and if you can guess it, Nate created Nate. <laughs> and then uh, my other friend, Mike, he created Miko and Crystal. Crystal's not one of the main nine anymore but she still holds relevance in the story for miko and you got to remember as kids you create characters that are basically yourself and i still think that holds true to some extent today with artists that create stories usually the main character are just representations of themselves so i think that's why i kept the names that the way they were and even with tim and my name being tim uh i think it's a very obvious reason why he's named tim but it's almost another nod to the fact that i think characters are just essentially an outlet for the artists and the creators to express themselves. Altered Mage says, I like Tracy for that very reason. I feel a lot of fear holds us back and people are very quick to judge. Yep. Yeah, it's funny. I've gotten a lot of messages of people liking Tracy and there's someone actually cosplaying her next year. Ooh. I know, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I, like, She's not even one of the characters I draw that much. But I think it's the idea of her attitude. And that confidence radiates. And it, and it kind of goes back to why I think even your friend group, you should surround yourself with people that have more of a can-do attitude and that will talk you into doing something and not talk you out of doing it. Right. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I think this is... Holy... I have a problem with consistency. One day I can draw the best thing I've ever drawn without really breaking a sweat, and then one day my hand doesn't seem to remember how to hold a pencil. And James is like, that can go for weeks, so I was wondering if you had some Yoda-like words of wisdom about this. Or is the first part? I get the best thing ever drawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> I, mean, I feel like this also reflects life. Some days you'll just have better days than others. And when you have an off day, I always remind myself that it's just today. Mm -hmm. And usually the next morning I can draw better. And if there's, for some reason it lasts two days, which has happened maybe twice in my life, honestly. I always feel like the next day, if I had a bad day the day before, I always feel like I draw better the next day. But I think it's to remind yourself that it's not permanent, it's temporary. And if you were able to create something great before, especially recently, you'll most likely be able to do it again. But a lot of it comes down to uh, the confidence you have and maybe, honestly, the setting that you're in. Uh, I feel like sometimes I draw better when I'm like in this position versus on the couch where I'm like laid back and the way I'm holding the notebook is different. So maybe if you drew something really great when you were out and about, well, try going out and about again. I mean, I feel like I was just talking about this like probably only create a really good picture every four months or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and in that way, yeah, bigger pieces are intimidating and we definitely battle that all the time yeah. here. And part of it, I think, is just take it in chunks. Realize that, yeah, it's awesome getting instant gratification on doing a smaller drawing, posting it on social media and getting that feedback right away. Yeah, that's addicting. But you can't forget that you have to do the bigger pieces too, not only to showcase your technical skills, but to also showcase your creative outlet and that you can push beyond something as simple as sometimes a little drawing. And I think I'm the biggest, <laughs> I would say, abuser of that idea because it, I get scared of doing bigger pieces and I will push it off and I'll keep pushing it off because it's easier to do smaller drawings and post them on Instagram and get that, you know, gratification. Yeah, I get it. But don't forget about doing your bigger pieces. All right, let's do two more and then we'll switch. Okay. Sparrow just says, I found your sketchbook too on my front step just a bit ago. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, thank you. How do I scroll? Oh, sorry. Can, okay. Light and Light and Sea says, can we talk about how exhausting being a starving artist is? Um, yeah. And I feel like, uh, I guess recently... I become more aware of how I need to grow in the next year. And I feel like I was definitely more in a comfort zone where I never had that pressure. I never had the need to really grow and push what I'm already producing. So it wasn't until recently where I kind of took a look at what I was doing. I'm like, I need to grow. I need to do things that are better than what I'm currently outputting. And I think one of the, actually I have an example. One of them was I need to do bigger prints and I don't know how well you can see it, but Just I've learned how to... <laughs> uh, oh, and there's glare because of the gloss. But essentially, I always wanted to incorporate gold into my drawings. And I was like, why have I been waiting for so long? Like, this makes so much sense for my traditional stuff to have gold infused in some way. So I was watching a lot of videos, how to do it, what would be the best method. And I just started doing it. So sometimes I think we get too comfortable, we don't even realize that we're holding ourselves back. Having that little ounce of fear, having a little bit of pressure put on you, I think is, is good. Too much obviously can be overwhelming and it might actually prevent you from doing stuff, but just a little bit, always having that little bit present, I think can remind you to push yourself. All right, one more. Um, Morla just says, hope you have a wonderful evening with the other cookies, cheers. Bye, Morla. Uh, no, hey, that was no. a question. Yeah, I know. Not says, if you haven't hit a shot you never took, you never really tried not trying to hit it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, say that again? Uh, if you haven't hit a shot you never took, you never really tried not trying to hit it. Not Locked just really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's basically just what you said yeah. earlier. Yeah. No, give me a question, question. Uh, Wix is, hello from San Francisco, finally made it to your stream, just got home from work, did I miss anything? Uh, kind of, but we just got started, we still have five other artists that are going to be streaming, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited because they're all my roommates, I'm really proud of them, and you get to see all of their styles, and they're going to talk about their own experience with success and failure, so I'm, I personally, I'm a little curious just to hear some of their answers and how they've dealt with it, and um, moving forward. You already forward. asked me. Yeah. Well, and Key and I share the same brain, so I feel like oftentimes I know the answer before I even ask. <laughs> <laughs> Why even ask? Fill the air, fill the void. Oh, yes. 
All right, so that is my little character, Tracy. Obviously, a very simple sketch. Very little. But uh, this was a, an example of me just going for it, not laying down pre-proportions or any preliminary lines, and just doing a sketch. Now, obviously, it's very easy. It's a straightforward shot. I was going to do something way more complicated, but I realized I wanted to talk um, about the subject more, and I know that when I talk, I get distracted with what I'm actually working on. So I wanted to make sure that... Uh, at least get something little done, but also get out the points with the questions out. Okay, so thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so now we are switching over to Ashley. Ashley. Who wants to be the moderator? I no, I'm the moderator for all. To get to the point Here, wait, where I'm I'll have, markering. I'll have you go in first because it's kind of hard to. Oh, Lord. I like your butt pillow. I think it's keys. Ah! <laughs> Help. Oh, my God. And then I'll this sit a little back so you don't have to worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is like. Where were you? Were you here? Yeah. Oh, weird. Okay. Hi, everybody. All right, you know what? Let me move the mouse so it's easier. There we go. That's a smart. Okay, so while Ashley is setting up, I'll give a quick little. Well, I guess you can talk about yourself. <laughs> well, unless, I mean, if you want to, I don't know. Um, ooh, that's dark. There oh yeah, there you go. Much better. Well, that's probably because you were on white. I guess my introduction is everyone welcome to the stream. This is Ashley, better known as Cloverkin, and you can find her own Twitch channel under Cloverkin. Is it just Cloverkin? It's just Cloverkin. just Cloverkin. I'm Cloverkin everywhere, except for Twitch. It's Cloverkin Art, because someone else had Cloverkin. I tried to contact them. They didn't, they didn't respond. Oh, that's adorable. Well, thank you. So Ashley chose my character, Bo, who essentially is a Highland ox that carries the cart that the crew travels <laughs> in. She did a really good job on this. Dude, I just, I, it's the rough stuff, the rough stuff. So I'm going to try to maybe get to coloring it. We'll see. <sighs> Half an hour, I don't know. But that's why I did a little pre preliminary sketch. Um, at first, I did a little thumbnail, and I was just going to go off that, but then I was like, you know, if I only have a half an hour, I should exactly. really try to... So anyway, on my stream, I usually dress up like an elf, and I stream on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. CST and Thursdays at 4 p.m. CST. Yeah, you're definitely dressing like an elf. You're not... Definitely not a real elf that we happen to acquire in the household. Right. Yes. Or not obtained some by creature. bad <laughs> means. <laughs> I am not a slave. <laughs> She's what? not conjured here. Tichel wants you to draw a train real quick. <laughs> oh, I bet he does. <laughs> Tichel. No. Keep that for my stream. <laughs> I have to show you that sometime. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Tim, do you want to tell them a little bit about Bo? Because, honestly, I don't know anything yeah. about Bo. Really. So, essentially... Uh, he can't talk, and he <laughs> he carries around the cart that the crew travels in, but his name is Bo because I grew up with a three-legged dog, and that's part of the reason that Bo's front left leg is kind of his barrel. It's a fake leg, and it's, it's I guess you could call it a peg leg, uh, and that's Bo. So not, not too much to him, but I'm going to ask you a few questions while you're going at it before we ask the viewer questions. Do it up. Okay, so Ashley, what mediums do you prefer working with? Ah, well, <laughs> um, usually I say this on my stream too, but um, for my initial sketches, I usually use coal erase pencils, but not the black or the white ones because they're a little bit too waxy. Um, if I do use black and white uh, Prismacolor pencils, they're usually the Premier brand because they're a lot softer, and you can blend them a lot easier. Um, after that, I usually go to Prismacolor markers, and I choose Prismacolor markers over Copics just because I honestly can't tell the difference, and I've been using markers for probably five years, <laughs> and Copics are expensive. So I'd rather just use the Prismacolors. Um, both brands, though, you can usually refill if you want to. Oh, can you? Yeah, um, because as long as the pigment on the tip of the marker is still there, um, you can keep refilling it with isopropanol. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but once that's gone, then you got to get a new one. But typically for my pet commissions and stuff, I use markers and uh, colored pencils, pastel pencils. Um, for my normal stuff, I can, I don't know, ink washes, watercolor, um, anything yeah. really, whatever I'm feeling like. 
Actually, I would say is very versatile oh, in terms you. of like the roommates. And I feel like you can adapt to mediums very quickly. I try. I had to, honestly. Uh, when I was in mobile games, I kind of had to dot around with a bunch of crap. So it's good to be versatile, but also, I don't know, at the same time, I'm learning that specialization is kind of important as well. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're spreading yourself too thin and, you know, then you can't kind of answer succinctly when somebody asks, what's your preferred medium? <laughs> but yeah, it's um, still good to experiment. Okay. So are you ready for the, the hard hitting questions? We can try it. Okay. The first one is to you, what does success look like? Uh, success. Um, well, I don't think it's technically money. For sure. I don't think uh, money denotes success by any means. I think it's basically the pride you take in what you do. And if you yourself are happy with what you do, I think success is only measured on a personal level, really. Um, and if anybody tries to measure your success for you, they're probably not uh, <laughs> quality. <laughs> or they're probably not the, the caliber of person you should be letting judge you. Uh, so to speak. But um, I think success really just depends on uh, where you're at, where you've been, you know, how much you've put into it. Um, but yeah, never by monetization or monetary means, by any means. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, how far you've come, really. All right, the next one is, what times have you felt the most successful? Um, usually when I finish something, uh, especially if it's been a big project, but usually you don't get to a big project just by saying, oh, hey, I'm going to do this giant project. You have to usually do a bunch of smaller projects first and gain momentum by finishing those. Um, or else if you just try to bite off a giant chunk, it's, you're going to choke, you know? So little bites <laughs> are usually a good way to look at it. Um, Especially if you know you're one of those people that's like, oh, I've got this giant story and all these characters. Well, put that on the back burner. Try doing a couple smaller stories first. Um, see where your strengths are, because maybe you're not a good writer. Maybe you need to find a writer. Or, you know, maybe you'd rather not color parts of that story. Stuff like that. Um, it's really good to find out your strengths and weaknesses that, you know, will lend itself best to your, uh, your project and what you want to do with it. Yeah. But um, me, myself, like I said, when I finish bigger projects or um, I guess when I actually made it into gaming, that was a pretty good feeling because I'd wanted to since I was 13. But then um, something really important is knowing that, you know, over time, your dreams will change. Um, and that's OK. You know, you can start off wanting to be something when you're a certain age and then you know, when you're older, you can change it. There's no rules to this, you know. Life is just whatever you kind of make it, and you're going to have stuff thrown at you you didn't expect, and that can really change where you end up going anyway. So um, you can set out with a dream that you originally intended, but if it changes along the way, that's okay, you know. Yeah. So I had started in mobile games, and uh, I was in them for 10 years, and originally I was like, uh, when I was 13, I saw Zelda and Final Fantasy, and I was like, oh, I want to be the guy that does the cinematics. And I set off to do that, but then, you know, along the way, you're like, well, I'd have to move to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to learn Japanese. That's not going to happen. What's the next best thing? What's closest to me? And then life just ends up narrowing more things down for you. So then I ended up working locally at a mobile game company, um, which was you know, close to what I wanted to do anyway, I ended up still doing cinematics and stuff. So for me, that was successful at the time. But now, you know, my idea of success has changed. And um, I'm, I'm being more successful now uh, than like a year ago. But like I said, it's a changing thing. So, you know, try not to put too much pressure on yourself. Success is ever changing and only you can judge it. So then... We got a question from Protohyper saying, can you name, or can you tell the name of the company you worked for? Um, I'd rather not. It was just a smaller company in Minnesota. I worked at two of them. 
Um, one of them actually was so small and didn't know what they were doing that they dissolved. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that one was probably in 2008, 2009. But yeah, I'd rather not say the names just because out of respect, I guess. But like I said, they weren't big at all. Um, I maybe shipped 15 titles with the second one I worked with, and I was with them for five years. So 15 is pretty good for five years. Yeah. But still, it's, uh, I don't know. Mobile games left a sour taste in my mouth, so I had to get out of that. It was a little bit of a poisonous industry, honestly. Uh, Miss Jibby says, Ashley, you work so fast. It's great. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, I probably was a jerk, and I stole the animal, and, like, the <laughs> animals for me are kind of... <laughs> My forte, I think the the thing though with this is I was gonna try to color it too, and I don't know how many how many of us are gonna color, so I just wanted to not be a jerk and be like, oh yeah, pencils, I'm done. So <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd challenge yeah. myself a little bit, so that's why I'm going fast with this. To, Cause you got 20 minutes, or no, like 18 minutes still. Yeah, tell me why I'm at 15, cause then I gotta switch to color. Oh yeah, I can definitely do that. Cool. Okay, so now moving on to the second half of the questions are, what does failure look like to you? Uh, basically what Tim said. I mean, right when he had said that earlier, I was like, just not trying. If yeah. you quit before you start or just say, oh, I'll never be able to do this. I mean, not trying is the worst thing you can do. Um, and then I guess the second worst thing you could do is try and then fail once and be like, well, that's how it's going to be. And then just give up completely. So don't give up. I mean, there's always going to be reasons why you may need to stop a project, but don't ever let it be yourself, you know, and your lack of confidence in what you're doing. Because um, that's never a good reason to quit something, you know? Yeah, that's very true. Uh, to do, when was the time you felt most like a failure? Ooh. Um... Honestly, I still feel it, and it's when, really? yeah, well, only just because, you know, I had gone to school for a certain thing, um, you know, and then I was in the industry for 10 years, and then I left, and now I'm not using it at all, so I almost feel like that's been mm. wasted, and sometimes when I let myself wallow in that a bit too much, you know, you feel like, oh, I wasted 10 years of this, and then four years of school, and then all this money, but then you have to reconcile, okay, well, I could use it if I wanted to. Um, I could go back to doing it if I wanted to. Or I could freelance with it, which I do still freelance with it. And honestly, that works better for me anyway, because nine to five at a company is not how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it can be different for everybody. Um, but, yeah, I think the failure thing is just feeling wasteful for me. Hmm. You know, when I feel like I've just wasted time or I've wasted... Um, like opportunities too. A lot of success is also luck and luck is usually really a part of putting yourself out there and having opportunities presented to you that you went and grabbed, you know? Like if somebody asks you to go to this place that's like an art thing and you say no, that was an opportunity for you to get yourself out there to potentially, you know, meet some people, get a job, anything. So luck is usually made by us, I feel like. Yep, like, I totally agree. You yeah. put yourself in situations where you can be lucky. Absolutely. Um, uh, Proto Hyper says, but you gained all that experience. It's true, but uh, with how I'm using things now, I had to switch to freelancing, and I do pet commissions for a living right now. So I've been drawing people's pets for the past two years. I'm getting close to being about 150 of them. Um, so I've made a business out of it, so I'm proud of that, but I'm also not proud that I feel like I, I'm wasting that experience you say I've gained, because I did gain all that experience. It's like in a game when you switch your talent tree or you know, you respec, you know, or you switch your class. You know, I'm no longer a mobile game artist. I'm, you know, a traditional artist now strictly. So it's like you start at zero again. And usually that's kind of like I feel like I take a hit then. But I usually get over it. I mean, pretty quickly cuz I hate wasting time. <laughs> <laughs> and wallowing is just honestly wasting time. 15. Okay. Two more seconds. All right. Um here I'll answer there's some questions here. Uh, Wix D says, Tim, would you do a stream about how you approach full cloth figure drawing session? Uh, yeah, 
I have done a couple in the past. We were talking about that too, the live drawing thing. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we we're thinking of possibly trying a like a live live drawing session. It's something that we or Ashley found on this other channel on Facebook, and it's a really great idea. And I'm like, oh, we there should be more of these. I don't know why this isn't like a popular thing already. Right. So I'm gonna hopefully try doing some of that eventually. But yeah, I think then we'll include some full full cloth figure drawing, but we'll have like. Um, Costumes or almost something? obnoxiously folding yes, fabrics. That'd be perfect. You know? uh, and then the other one was Jay Hart says, "Hey Tim, do you think your book will make it to Texas? It better, considering half my orders are around the world. So if it can't make it to Texas, I'm in trouble." <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo. John Miller says, "How do you decide when you push your boundaries, learning something new, and when to protect perfect something you know well?" that's all in your gut don't you think i 100 percent agree like if you feel like uh hey i want to try uh gouache and then you try gouache and you're like mm, i kind of feel this and then you know you work with it for a while more and then just depending on how you feel about it how it works with your style and you know what you already know you know and maybe at that time you don't really know much about it yet so maybe that's not the time to try it and you know, maybe put on the back burner, but I feel like if you really take a liking to, you know, after you've experienced um, something new, then, you know, explore it. Why not? Um, unless, you know, you're strapped for time or whatever, but uh, typically, I don't know, I, I think it's good to yeah. experiment, you know, because then you can figure out ways to improve what you already do. Like for me, um, five years ago, I was like, I'm going to just get good at markers because I want to get good, you know? Um, and then I, I think I'm pretty decent with markers now. I know how to maneuver them and stuff, but I also found out markers weren't enough. So I had to figure out a supplemental medium to put with them and the colored pencils and pastels actually really lend themselves to marker. So just by experimenting, I figured that out and I improved my, you know, marker drawings because of it. So it's always good to see what you can use. You know, and you can use, like, gouache with watercolor, too. You know, mix and match anything you can. You know, you'd be surprised yeah. at what works with other things. What about you, Tim? What do you, how do you feel about it? Oh, it's what you said first. It's like a gut feeling. Yeah. I, I've i never been disappointed when I've trusted my gut intuition, honestly. Uh, to do. And the very last one is how do you... I mean, I guess I kind of already know what you're going to say, but how do you utilize <laughs> failure? Um... I mean, utilize. I mean, just fuel, I guess. You have to, it's knowledge. I mean, regardless of how you fail, you know, it's knowledge. And now you know what not to do, which to me is, you know, just as important as knowing what to do. Um, same with, like, what you like, what you don't like, stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think just doing that, uh, failing is part of the process of succeeding. And people that don't fail enough probably won't succeed. You yeah. Know? You have to put yourself in the position to fail, and that takes courage. And a lot of people can't do that. So if you're doing that already, you're, you know, you're brave. You're putting yourself out there, and you got to keep doing that. And that's where the grind gets difficult. And that's when people you know, fall off and quit. So just don't quit. And you'll eventually get there. Yeah. It's almost guaranteed, honestly. It yeah, just so takes true. time and patience. If you can do that and, you know, not get off the train, you'll be good. Okay, so now let's see. We got some questions. The Altered Mage says, It won't be wasted. You can help mentor new mobile ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Altered Mage comes to my stream. <laughs> or sorry, Mobile Indies. No ideas. They've uh, they've heard me uh, pitch my Patreon many times. <laughs> so on my Patreon, I do do like mobile game uh, like apprenticeships. So if you want to do graphics for mobile games or animations or anything like that, I can teach you how to optimize stuff. Um, I can teach you what you'd need to know. So. Uh, Follow me on Cloverkin on Twitch, and, you know, we can talk about that on my streams. But, yeah, I, uh, I can do the mentorship thing. You're right. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying. I thank you, Tordinary Pen, for following. Tordinary. And Ella says, Ashley, do you ever get tired of drawing pets? No, and I'll tell you why. Because, A, I love animals. 
B, I love the whole fantasy genre to no end. Like, I used to be sci-fi, and I realized sci-fi wasn't for me. And fantasy really has always been a part of me ever since I was little. So, uh, I mean, you're talking to an elf, I guess. I, I take it a, a, a bit too far, but you know what? It's fun. Um, but I would say uh, I don't get tired of drawing them just because they're one of my favorite things in the world to draw. And you really want to use your gifts you know, to enhance the lives of others. And I think for me, this is one of those things that hit it on like every point, you know, um, just medieval outfits, uh, like children's book looking at illustrations um, and just animals in general. Cause I, I love animals and how different they can be. And, you know, an ox can look completely different than a dog, you know, and mastering all those things is such a wide open thing that just excites me. So I really yeah. love animals to no end. Ten. Ten? Okay. I, I feel like I want to give you updates so that you know mentally where it is. No, all. that's great. I love that. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love being put under pressure. <laughs> uh, Christy says, I know that a lot of traditional supplies are expensive. My issue is that I am such a cheapskate that some of the necessary items that I need, I don't get. Is there a way I can push past the money aspect? I mean, it depends on what you, you're referring to specifically. If it's like paints or marker or whatever. Um, I know a lot of people have an aversion to markers just because, yeah, they can get expensive. They're a lot to lug around. And Gabe, who's coming on after me, can tell you a little bit about that. Him and I differ on the idea that um, I like the markers and how they look and how quick they dry. Um, he likes markers too and how they look, but um, he doesn't want to have to lug around everything. So he ended up switching to watercolors. And I love the look of watercolor too, but the problem is you have to wait for them to dry. And I have no patience when it comes to <laughs> that. So, I mean, to each their own. And watercolors do end up being cheaper than markers. Um, and they last a lot longer. So it's really just how you work and catering yourself to how you work and your tools. Because um, everybody's different. And never feel bad for using something the way you do. Um, also, a point I forgot to make earlier is... Um, Measuring success on a, p a single piece, too. Um, never do that uh, with time. Like, you never want to say, oh, this piece will only be good if I spend 20-plus hours on it. Every piece is going to be different and demand its own amount of time. Don't think just because you spend more time on a piece that it's going to be good. Because that's not true. It's going to depend on your level of uh, technique, technicality. Um, when you're medium, so yeah, never measure success of a piece by how long you take on it. Yeah. Because I knew a couple people that did that, and it's like, no, it's not right. Tuesday says, I've always wanted a pet elf. Where can I catch one? <laughs> Tuesdays at 9 p.m. <laughs> and Thursdays at 4. Oh, that was good, <laughs> You can uh, come catch me. <laughs> Carl Oetiel says, I like this quote, success is many little efforts done every day. Yeah. I'd say so, yeah. It doesn't even have to be little, it can be huge. <laughs> and it doesn't even have to be every day as long as you're still trying, honestly. As long as you try. Yeah. You know, you're putting effort in, all that. Effort. How much? Actually, I skipped one. Oh, uh, you have seven. Seven. Go, go, go. Um, so there's one from Faith. I know I, I saw it earlier. Okay, just real quick. Right now I'm just doing flats. I probably won't have time to render, but at least we're getting the flats down. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's important. Uh, Greg says, what's the first step to build our own fictional world? Because every time I decide the theme, I always confuse. I always confused. I'm assuming that I'm always confused where to start, but for character first or the world, etc. What matters to you the most? I mean, it really depends on the type of story it is, too. You don't always need to world build, uh, if it, like, right away if it's a small story. You know, if it's a tiny world. Like, one of my stories takes place probably within, like, three feet by three feet. And another story is, like, an entire forest. So yeah. world building really depends on the world. Um... But, I mean, some stories start with the characters, some stories start with the world, some start with an object, you know? So, I really wouldn't give yourself too many rules, just go where your mind takes you and what sounds the most fun in the beginning, 
because that'll get you amped up for the rest of the story. Um, otherwise, if you try to shoehorn yourself into, okay, today I have to work on this, or today I have to work on this, and if it's a passion project, that's going to be a little hard, especially at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, later on, you can totally, uh, you know, be like, all right, well, I've got all this figured out. Now I have to figure out this other part. You can do that later. But in the beginning, you just got to see if it's worth doing. Yeah, very true. <clears throat> Uh, Faith says, how do you know you are successful when you are drawing every day, pushing yourself, but have less than a thousand followers and have no job as an artist? No, I still need to push God. myself, but I'm feeling frustrated. Never gauge yourself by followers. It's one of the worst things you can do. If you get hung up on social media and how it's working for you, um, then you're worried more about that than your art, and that's not good. You should always just be worried about your art and where you're at with that and only compare yourself to yourself. Really. Preach. Preach. <laughs> John Miller says, how would you go about getting your story published? Oh, uh, that's a better question for Gabe <laughs> um, since he got the hookup. But uh, for me personally, my own little journey with my stories, um, I've talked to publishers, some, uh, most of them actually small time, and they've wanted a couple of my stories, but I don't want to give them to them just because I know they are small time. And it's like, you know what, I'd rather just keep going around to conventions and hawking my stuff and have it still remain mine, you know, and have control of it. Yeah. So really, if you just keep grinding and doing what you do and people see it and they keep recognizing you and you put yourself out there, I think eventually it'll hit. But you have to put all, all that work in up front, you know, and that's where people fall off again. They don't want to keep going around and hawking their stuff, you know, and meeting people. So you just got to make sure you can do that, I guess. Let's see. Get his horns in. Yeah. Um, oh, they're motivating each other now. Oh, good job, guys. <laughs> Get an art support group. It really helps in terms of money and going places and just, you know, like your heart <laughs> yeah. you know oh yeah discord helps a lot uh we're new to discord but we're learning that it's a really good platform for making connections and staying in the loop with people mm -hmm. so get a little group together and start a discord yeah we're new to this yeah it, it was the first thing i've learned lately that actually made me feel super old <laughs> Because usually I'm good at keeping up with tech, but oh my god. I yeah, that's what we were a little behind on. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so bad. How much time I got? Uh, you are at... Am I done? Two minutes. Two minutes. All right. You can do like the little finishing touches in random areas. Well, yeah. He's not even close to done, but um, at he's least... He's cute. I'm glad. I'm good. Well, he's yours. You get him. <laughs> oh. Oh, I just... oh, I forgot his... Hold up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Here we go. He's got a little gold ring in his nose. I usually do this with all my commissions and drawings. I put a little bit of that in. Oh, do you really? Yeah. I know I can you do show it for every single one. Yeah, a lot of them I do. Um, in my original arts that I put out for sale at cons, I usually do. <laughs> That's why I carry it with me. He's got a little septum piercing. He's a rebel. <laughs> He's a rebel, baby. <laughs> you know, rebel. He's a rebel. Re oh! oh. <laughs> But he's an ox. It's incorrect. <laughs> Inaccurate. Um, any other questions? Um, did you, is there a CG Cookie Discord group? Not currently, but I know that they plan on doing one because Discord's really becoming popular. Yeah. And I know even just for like instant feedback or critique or if you saw them post your art, that kind of thing, I think that will probably be what the channel will cater to. Um, Protohyper is talking about how to get all the supplies, I believe, and says, oh, wait. You could try doing the best with what you have, sell or do commissions, and save money for what you need. I guess it's more of a comment, really. That's true. I mean, it all depends, too, on if you have a uh, job that's, like, you know, part-time job, full-time job, depends on how much time you have, stuff like that. Because if you have a job on the side, you can afford to do a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. And definitely take advantage of that, you know, in terms of, oh, if I need to go to this convention, I can save up because I've got a job. Uh, some of us, though, have to <laughs> uh, 
um, depend on conventions to fund other conventions, stuff like that. That's where freelance can get a little tricky. But, yeah. Um, okay, here's our last question then. Alan Green says, do you guys ever worry that your skill at a particular medium or style will become obsolete or unpopular? Uh, mine was to start. Like, that was part of the reason I started Marker is because I know it had this terrible reputation for being cheap and it looked bad and I wanted to make it look elegant and stuff. Um, so, you know, when I tell people I primarily work in Marker now, I do get a look, you know, and they're like, are you serious? It's like, yeah, but, you know, look what I can do with it. And I think um, proving that has actually changed a lot of people's perceptions on markers. Like, a lot of my friends in my streams now have started using markers. And they're a really nice, fast way to do something. Um, and, you know, if you take your time with it, you can also make it look super elegant, like, you know, almost a fine art medium, depending on how much, you know, skill you have and how much time you put into it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Okay. That's all we got. Yay. Thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I love them. I'm glad. So I'm gonna cute. finish them for the rest of the stream. I'll finish them so you can have them. All right. So cute. Follow all right. me on Twitch, though. <laughs> and everywhere else. So is Cloverkin. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Gave you up. Yep, the next roommate to the drawing board is Gabriel Bautista. Gabo. 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 Yo, Gabo, Gabo. In the butt of my pants, I'm sure everyone just saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but wait. Oh, Finally. Yes. Oh, they also thank you, and Gypsy gave you four clovers. Oh, yeah. She's got my emote. <laughs> Gypsy subscribes to me. She's got my emoji. Wow. Oh, what a nice little chair he's got here. That's keys. <laughs> Way to switch because mine's not as nice. Thank you, Proto Hyper, for following. Dang. All right, so it's right here. So essentially, within these two tape lines is like the area. Perfect. I'll get those out of here. Well, thank you. <laughs> Actually, they, uh, Carlos said that cow should be on a shampoo commercial. <laughs> Because you're worth it. Come on. All right, so next is actually Gypsy Beat Me to the Punch. That's oh. Gabe's Twitch channel, so you oh, could Twitch go channel. check it out. Me. Uh, this is, well, I guess, have... would you like to say who you are and what is your app? Oh, you already did some. And what's your app? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah, switch oh. the banner. Um, can we move? Oh, yes. Can, we, can you move that over? Since I'm left handed? Yeah, I'm left handed. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, the PNG no. is a. Uh, oh, right is it? I'll move myself over. Right. How many you mean? lefties? <laughs> How about this? Do you want to move the camera over? Uh. Oh yeah. Okay, that works. Okay. I guess yeah. Let me Ooh. move this down. I got scratchies right now because I haven't shaved in a while. Excuse me. I'm kind of. There dirty. we go. Oh, look at Crazy. <laughs> look at that. That's Crazy. <laughs> that one's That's perfect. That's Crazy Girl. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this one was a little messed up. And Gabe's done. Um, thank you, Gabe, for... Thank you. <laughs> Peace. Um, all right, my name is... My name is Gobble. The gov my government name is Gabriel Bautista. You might be able to find me under that name um, for some comic projects that I've worked on. Um, but I am a professional comic book artist. I make very little money doing <laughs> comics. So if you're trying to get into that... Um, Make sure that you have a, uh, a parents who love you that'll let you sleep over uh, every other month when you can't pay the rent. Uh, um, today, I'm going to be drawing Grizzy, as you can see right here. She's, uh, I picked her because I like drawing uh, ugly people and bigger people. Um, we Which all know Grizzy's neither. Grizzly's I don't beautiful. know why you picked her. Yeah, She is beautiful in her own way, but she is definitely a, a big girl. I like wrinkles. I like... Uh, I like age on a face. I like detail on a face. Um, it, every time that I'm drawing, like somebody who's supposed to be, you know, conventionally beautiful, I feel like I, I keep drawing. I keep adding in little lines here and there, and it, it doesn't. It's no good because, um, well, then it makes them look older, which sucks. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that's why I picked Drizzy because I like her. But anyways, um, 
So what mediums do you prefer working with? Oh, so my And mediums, what are you going to be working today? My mediums of choice are watercolor uh, and gouache. Uh, today, I've got... Um, I'm just going to do some, like, pen... Pen and ink, a pencil, in case I want to um, be safe. Um, <laughs> um, I, I like a lot of a lot of this book. I'm going to flip through this book real quick. A lot of this book is uh, just straight ink work like I don't pencil a lot um, so I like to just um, I like the fact that just working straight with ink um, you can't fix your mistakes and uh, if you ask me if you want to get good at drawing quickly or drawing confidently um, only use a pen because then you you have no choice but to keep going if you make a mistake um, but today I'm not gonna do that because I'm trying to draw something nice for Tim <laughs> I'm trying to be nice sorry um, but yeah, typically, um, typically my tools of trade are like a little um, Kohler race, which is barely used ever. Um, this fountain pen that I got, it's a uh, vintage fountain pen from the 1930s. And it's wonderful because it, uh, I don't know if you can, okay, good. Um, you can get a very like broad stroke if you want, or you can just get real lot of lines, little, little lines, or even smaller lines if you flip it over. Mm. Um, this is an investment though. If you're going to get something <laughs> like this, I paid like 160 bucks for this one, um, which means that it is attached to me at all times. Um, and I keep it in this nice little pouch. It's in my pocket all the time. Um, you can get fountain pens for like 15 to 30 bucks, real cheap, nice ones. Um, if you look up Pilot Metropolitan, that's a really nice starter fountain pen. The nice thing about them is that you can refill them with your own ink. Like, like this one right here. This is a Lamy, right? This is a Lamy fountain pen. Um, and you can just get one of these converters. Some of the uh, fountain pens come with a converter, and you can fill it up with whatever ink you've got, whatever ink you want. There are some inks you want to stay wet away from, but I won't get into that. And this is a Rot Ring Ice Rot Ring Rot Ring uh, Isograph. Uh, it's basically a micron that never wears out because it's got um, an ink reservoir that you just put whatever kind of ink you want into it. You want purple, you want green, you want red, you want polka dot. You can't get polka dot. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, it's a steel nib, so it literally like unless you are a um, 400 pound man who puts 400 pounds of pressure into your pen strokes, you cannot. This nib is not going to wear down. You know what that means? You don't have to buy more dumb microns. And I know how the expensive they are. They're like three, four bucks per. Per. Yeah. That is not the cat you want to hang out with. Um, all right, and lastly, it's a water pen. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Blick. Um, foreign art stores, I'm sure. Uh, but basically, you fill it up with water, and then it becomes a, a pen that is constantly filled with water, or a brush rather. It's constantly filled with water, Ooh. so you can just, um, you know, do whatever the heck you want there. Um, and the nice thing about the ink that I've got in here, it's nice and bad thing, is that it's not waterproof. So when I am drawing something, like I just did there, you can see all this shading that I got here is because I just basically melted away the uh, the line work with my water pan um, I can do it right here so you can it just sort of melts away right oh, yeah. um, so some inks do that some inks don't um, so you can definitely get ones that don't do that like the black ink that I've got in the rot ring um, that one doesn't really you know that one's waterproof it's almost waterproof not a hundred percent is like 90. 6.743 repeating. Um, uh, I can't think. Hold on, brain fart. And I just dropped something. All right. Well, it's funny. Okay. People are even saying like they hate my ground pens because those nibs. Yeah. Too. No, no, dude. Okay. Save up like 20, 30 bucks. Go on Amazon. Look for a rot Wait, ring let me, isograph. Let me type it on. Yeah. Rot. Oh, that is hard to say. Rot ring. Yeah, I know. I don't know who invented that word. Um, there we go. Um, Get one of those. They have like a, a three pack that's like you can get like a point two, a point four, a point seven. All right. But this point four, this is uh, equal to, I'd say, like a, a three, a zero three micron. Um, so if you're going to get one, 04 is a zero three micron. I got a point two, and that is like a zero zero five. Hmm. And that one's kind of hard to like work with because it's very scratchy because of the steel nib. Um, so I'd say if you're going to like get one to mess around with, get a three or get a four 
and it'll be equivalent to what you kids probably use as a micron. Anyways, let's go. Questions, hit me. <laughs> Are you all? I'm, I keep scratching my nose. It's not because I've been, you know, doing bad things. It's because, um, um, A, I need to clip my nose hair. Gross. And because I'm old, uh, and I'm turning 37 in like two days. And two, because allergies are like stupid oh, here right now, right? Okay. Yeah. <sighs> two days. Two days? Three days. <laughs> September 2nd, 37. I have an Amazon wish list. If you have money, <laughs> if, you are a, uh, if you are a rich Saudi prince, hook me up. I need a new boat. He's got an email from one. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to start drawing Grizz. All right, now while you're doing that, while I'm, I'm going to ask that, you, yeah. there are six questions. Oh, are you ready? I feel like I'm on a game show. I'm on the host. You have six questions. You have all three lifelines still remaining. Yep. First one, what does success look like to you? Um, success is someone who does not give up on things. You may have to talk louder. Success is someone... <laughs> six, sorry, guys. Sorry. Success to me is someone who... Um, uh, Honestly, if you look at video games, all right, if you complete a task in a game, that is a su success, right? If you set out to make, you know, if you make a goal for yourself and you complete it, that's success, all right? Um, and I know you guys are probably looking for a bigger, you know, like validation in success. So if you want the bigger one, here's success. Get the, my success. For me, get published by a major publishing company, right? Um, major comic book co publishing company. Um, I got published by DC. I was a colorist for DC for like two or three years. Um, that was still okay. All right. I want to draw for DC at some point just to make those big bucks. But um, then I got published by Oni Press, who does Scott Pilgrim and Rick and Morty and Invader Zim. Um, that was my success. Like that was my milestone, right? Um, another point for me was um, getting uh, some sort of award saying that, hey, you did it. You're the guy. And I did get that. And it was a 2015 Russ Promising Newcomer, Russ Manning Promising Newcomer nomination. I didn't win it. This guy. But the fact that I got nominated showed me that my peers around me were like, hey, you, you're the guy. You can be the guy. Here, maybe you can win this guy. Um, this comma guy. Um, oh, cool. She's up here, and I had my phone open. I'm a oh, yeah, sorry. Cool. Thank you. Um, that oh, was yo. Well, you kind of already answered the second question yeah. too. Those what was times that? you felt most successful? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, no, I think the times I'm full, I've felt most successful wasn't the comics thing. Um, oh. And that changes, actually. Um, it'll change throughout your lifetime. Um, what might you know, like right now, like. You might think that uh, getting a thousand followers on Instagram is successful. Um, to me, well, to Tim, that's chump change, right? <laughs> a thousand followers, whatever. <laughs> He's got 30K. You know, what's a thousand followers to him, right? No, he appreciates every single follower. I know. Cause he's, you know why I know? Because on his cell phone, he doesn't turn off notifications. He likes to see every <laughs> single like, every single comment. His phone is constantly on. It's a um, um, <laughs> Or the Etsy chime, if any of you are, are privileged <laughs> enough to hear it. Between these two, we don't get any sleep at night because it's like ching ching, ching ching. Stop buying their stuff. It's a bit. <laughs> sometimes it's a bit. It's a bit frustrating because you know, like, like while money is going into their pocket, money's coming out of ours. Um, just because you know bills or whatever. Because anyway, yeah. it, it just so happens Gabe is the one buying all of me. And I keep buying. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to clean them out so that you know I can corner the market and sell it for twice the. Uh, yeah, you're uh, a dummy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's you. Um, what the hell was it talking about? Um, oh, times you felt most successful. No, okay, yeah. So to uh, to some people it might be you know success might be different, right? Um, and to others it'll you know um, to you it might be a thousand followers. To me, it's something completely different, and it'll change. So over time, it changed. At first, it was, uh, you know, like, oh, get published, get a Nisner, get a Harvey, right? Um, and I sort of got those things. But now, um, one of my biggest successes was getting a Kickstarter, publishing my own work, um, yeah. you know, by myself, having the, um, the fact that, like, I have enough fandom, and then the fact that I'm able to produce a book that, um, you know, like, the idea is 
solid enough where somebody's actually going to want to buy it. Like that is um, that was success to me because uh, finally I'm the guy. And I made, like, whatever. I was going to say, I think you're yeah. downplaying how successful it was. Gabe actually made over, was it 13? It was, yeah, it was, like, 12-something. It was but very successful. It was very successful. Yeah, I only I was only asking for, like, uh, 13, I think. Yeah, sorry, I was only asking for, like, 6. <laughs> wow. So I got, hi. I was only asking for 13, I was, and I got, I got 13. It. No, I was only asking for, like, uh, 6, and I ended up getting, like, 13-ish. Um, so that was nice. But anyways. Oh, here, you might need to move it up. Now I'm just noodling. Yeah, why don't I do oh. this? There you go. There you go. Now I'm just noodling. Oh, I made it worse. Wait. There we go. Good? Good. Oh. No. Ooh, wait. Oh, no. Maybe pull out. Oh, there you go. There it is. Stop hey. laughing, Ashley. There it is. No more nice. innuendos. All right. We got some questions here. Oh, no. Uh, First, I want to ask you. Give me an How do you... Uh, go ahead. What? Yeah. What do you, what do you mean? Oh. <laughs> and it, I don't usually erase, but like right one? now it's really messed up. No, no, it's a big, okay. it's a big mistake. Cool. I wasn't paying attention. Not a happy mistake. Anyways, how do uh, I work? Okay, the last question before the other three are: How do you achieve success? How do you achieve success? How do you personally? How, me? Yes. How does God uh, wake achieve success? wake up in the morning? Bam. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, do, doing doing what you set out to do. Like if you don't. If you don't do the project that you wanted to do, then you're failing, you know? And, okay, and so let's say that you didn't, you know, I'm going to draw 37 pages today. <laughs> Stupid. Don't make goals for yourself that, you know, like, be, be smart. You know, don't, don't go out and try to make a, you know, like a, a novel with a bunch of illustrations. Um, if you've never written before in your life, um... Tim's working very hard on his novel. Um, Tim has scaled down his project, as I also yeah. have scaled down my projects because I realize you at, you get to a certain point where you're like, this is a, an f ton of work that I have to do, and by the time I'm done with it, I'm gonna be fifty three, you know. And if this is all I worked on, that's kind of messed up, right? So yeah. and you pick, have other ideas that you want to. Do. Yeah, exactly. Pick little battles, because if you don't pick little battles, then um, You'll never get to the war, you know, like it, it's. Oh, you got some good questions. All right. These are the things you can answer. And... Yo, hit it. Okay. Gypsy says, I have all this money in my pocket. How can I support you? Gobble with it. Um, you can. Uh... Thankfully, his Kickstarter was so successful. He doesn't need money. Anymore. No. Um, <laughs> now, now what I need is um, I'm going to I'm going to put a an address on the on the screen real quick. It's to the IRS. Um, if you could please make the check payable to. Uh, in. <laughs> Internal Revenue Service. Um, no, I've got a Patreon. If you guys want to check out Patreon, it's under the same name as my... Uh, as Damn, this thing is so scratchy. Under the same um, name as uh, my Twitch here. It's Galvasaur. So everything... Click the yeah. link below, too, to get or, to yeah. this Twitch. Yeah, or the, yeah that thing. Um, but i got a Patreon. Um, think, think of this, guys. Think of this. Um, you got a dollar? You Let's say you have $10 a month that you spend, right? You can give $1... To 10 artists that you love on Patreon, right? Just $1. That's all you need, all right? Imagine if 200 other people gave just $1 to one artist. $200 a month for that one artist can um, pay for internet, can pay for the cell phone, can pay a car note, can pay half or if not like 66% of rent right here, um, okay? Um, that can... You know, like 200 people, it doesn't sound like a lot. At $1, like if you have $10, you know, like a month, go support or even 5 bucks a month or even $1 a month. Go support one of your favoritist artists, all right? Favoritist. Um, favoritist. Um, because, you know, like you guys got to remember, like we, you know, we as artists, even you guys as artists, you know, we don't go to shows all the time. You know, sometimes we can't sell our work. We put up... Like, uh, me and Ashley, and I know, like, Tim and Key and everyone else in the house has suffered this, but we're like, oh, man, I made this badass print. I'm going to put it on Etsy. I'm going to put, I'm going to blast it everywhere. I'm going to spend, like, 10 bucks on Facebook ads. Um, I'm going to sell, like, 100 of these. Don't sell a single one. Wait, you know what? Let me redo this. Let me put it up again. You get a free piece of original art with everyone. With everyone. Only 15 bucks. Who wants original art? I do. <laughs> nothing radio silence right 
that's fine. Maybe people don't have money. Maybe people just don't want to print. But anyways, I'm getting the <laughs> from my producer. So um, <laughs> actually in the background. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, wait. So we got three questions I need to shoot at you, and then okay, we still have shoot. three more. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. And you got, we got ten minutes to do this. Okay, let's see. Are you good? I'm good. Okay. Question one. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. No, let's scroll, let's scroll up. It was like the Academy Awards song I could hear playing. <laughs> um, Amrith Flower says, I'd like to post my art, but I'm struggling to create professional account name. Do you have any advice? In the Hold on, there's more to it. How did you settle for yours, and should you spell your name differently in English, or use it at all if it's common? It's kind of silly, but I'm taking it very too much seriously. I think it should be serious. This is a very serious. This is a very serious subject. We're all right? very serious. People. We're very serious about um, <laughs> naming conventions of you know of things that you pick. Um, you do not want to be um, Art Master sixty nine. <laughs> for all your life because nobody's gonna like take you seriously right um if you have a cool last name you just use your last name all right um von von he used you know he's von reading he used just von right that's fine um there's another guy we know okay that's fine um you know there's another guy his name is uh peter morbacher he just uses morbacher right if you don't have Moorbacher a is distinguished yeah it's very distinct all right if you don't have a super cool last name or you don't think you have a super cool last name um let me tell you why i used gabo i used gabo because there's another comic book artist out there called his name is gabriel ba, ba. my name is gabriel bautista okay um he is very awesome. He's worked with the, the lead singer from, what's his name? From um, the Black Parade. Mm. Oh, uh, Gerard. Justin Gerard. Yeah, that guy. No, I don't want to say, I want to say yeah. Justin Gerard. Uh, he's, he's worked, with the, he's worked with, the, with the writer from My Chemical Romance. All right, this guy's big time, right? And when I first started working in comics, I kept getting people coming to my table and saying, oh, you know, like handing me his books and saying, you know, can you sign this? And be like, no, no, no. I'm Gabriel Bautista, not Gabriel Ba, right? So that was a problem in my situation. Otherwise, I would just stick, stuck to Bautista, but no. Um, so now I go by Gabo. Um, if you're going to come up with a name, what was the first part of the question? <laughs> God, um, do you have any advice on creating a professional account name? I, I mean, I... How about this? You keep working. That's tough. That's a tough one because it... You, we, we have to talk, like, one-on-one. -on -one. Like, that's, that's a tougher thing where, you know, I have tons of advice about it, but it's very, you know, like... It, it's case-to-case. -case, yeah, you got to tell me what you're, what you're thinking, and then come to my stream, and we'll talk. Yeah, it would be one of those things where it's like, what kind of art do you produce? What it will one, what is your name? If you do have a solid name, mm -hmm. and that it is distinguished, and, yeah. like, something that isn't that common, I would just use that, honestly. Mm -hmm. You can never that regret using it. doesn't have a million it. things on Google search. Yeah. That, too. And make it something easy to spell. I think that's been one of the biggest things we've always come across is people that have very hard to spell <laughs> usernames. Yeah. And you don't ever want to have to like individually letter it out for someone, especially if like you're at a booth and you're behind <laughs> it and they're like looking for you on Instagram. It should be like really easy for them mm. to find you. M O H R B A C R A -E -R. underscore um, underscore one one seven two four. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Like you never, I, I think numbers can be kind of a trap. I would say if you can, I would avoid them. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're a band. Unless you're, so avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's next? Okay. John Miller says, Gabe, how do we be smart like Gabe? <laughs> These aren't very good questions. You want to know how to be smart like me? Don't huff paint. Don't huff <laughs> other products. Um, if you oh, are under your working space. If you are under what? Honestly. Oh, what? People that don't ventilate their working. Oh space. yeah, don't yeah. Ven oh. Please ventilate. Ashley <laughs> suffered from this. Um, ventilate your workspace. Um, if you are under the age of seventeen, do not do any um, recreational uh, things uh, because they will stunt your uh, mental growth. This is a scientifically proven thing. Uh, maybe once in a while, but no, it's illegal. <laughs> All right. In most states. In most states. Okay, are you ready for the other three hard-hitting questions? Hard. Okay. Gabe, what does failure look like to you? I was going to get political, but I won't. And don't um, use people's names. Oh, no. Don't use... <laughs> don't be political, Gabe. 
Um, failure, good. failure is um, giving giving up. You know, like I think we we this you know we've talked about this already. Like um, giving up on what you're doing. Now, that's not to say that um, sometimes you need to give up. Sometimes there's a project and it's just not working out. Um, like I've definitely been on some projects where it's like, all right, I just can't. I can't do this right now. When you say um, it's not giving up, it's moving on. Moving on, yeah. Um, I've been in relationships where I had to move on. You know, like the, you know, you got to figure out which one is is which. Um, if it feels, uh, it doesn't feel right, then don't keep doing it, because uh, you know why waste your time. Is that something you feel like you're getting getting more attuned with now that you you become older? Because now I'm starting to uh-huh. hit those trickles where when you trust your gut or you respond to it and you can actually. Oh yeah, like notice it happening. Yeah, it's it starts to come out. It's all the time now. Though I sometimes we are clouded by our um, nostalgia of things that we've done. Um, well, very 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 important thing that a, a teacher told me once was, um, um, if you can't wake up in the morning and come up with at least one new concept, right? Then either start working on that, or find another field of work. All right. Because if, if you want to be a creative professional, you need to be able to, you know, create something new every single day, right? Um, and that, I mean, that, that could be, you know, something small, like, you know, just creating, thinking of like a storyline or thinking of a character, right? Um, but uh, don't rely on the things that you came up with when you were a baby, um, but, try uh, to evolve. Well, I think you eat my kawaii kitten for following. Oh, All right. <laughs> That's my favorite. All right. Hard hitting question number two. Name some times or share with us a time when you felt most like a failure. Um, this is super personal, but it's um, <laughs> um, my Kickstarter was a great success, but uh, afterwards was not a great success. Mm. Um, I had some. Um, problems some relationship problems and they um i ended up uh not being able to pay for all my books i still owe the publishing company books or money for for my books um i I have enough of the books to send out to the backers but all the backers that are left now are international shipping and that's like 25 bucks per right it's very expensive um, oh, you got three minutes, game. Yeah. Okay. So right now, let's let's just say that that was that was a very big thing. Like I, I should have paid for the the shipping immediate, or I should have paid for everything immediately. Um, but I definitely dropped the ball on that. And you know, like always, ask questions because I failed to ask the yeah. printing company, "Hey, how much is this?" And then they didn't get back to me until Honestly. after I didn't have the money. So always ask questions. And when you set up your Kickstarter, you don't realize that your book's gonna be a certain weight, mm-hmm. and like that accounts to. Uh, Having a more expensive shipping charge. Yep. Okay. And then the third hard-hitting one is, how do you personally utilize failure? Um, very often, I don't. Because, um, um, again, it, it, no, it's not that I don't fail. It's that I... <laughs> Gabe never fails, actually. I'm very bad at recognizing my failures. Um, but being with Ashley these past two years, oh, no. almost two years... Um, she's helped me look at all the things that I need to work on. Um, whereas before I used to, um, you know, like if I'd be drawing, I, I don't know how many times I've drawn a foot incorrectly and I just didn't care. And I knew, I knew that that it looked wrong, but I just didn't care. And I was like, you know what? I'll fix it later or I'll, you know, I'll draw the foot better next issue. Um, but I, you know, I never did. Um, so what was the question again? (laughs) How do you personally okay. utilize failure? So now, now I, you know, I look at the things that I'm doing, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, un- I guess under a microscope, you know, like I, I try now to um, enhance what I'm doing. Um, I'm aware. I, yeah, I analyze more. I get more critical about my stuff. Um, but also, if you got deadlines, don't get too critical on yourself because um, it's, a it's a very tough balance. But anyways, okay. Do we have anything else? Yeah, one crazy? more question, and we you gotta call. It and then I have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, Debination says, "How do you improve line work? Like when to use that kind of line weight? How to practice to get a clean line weight okay. or line work?" Um, depends on what you're doing. I mean, honestly, like it. Um, 
uh, pick pick a project, pick a a subject, and realize that when you're doing thin lines, then it's going to be something that's not as important. But if you're picking like let's say um, let's say this uh, uh, crud. Um, oh, here this is a perfect example. Actually, I started um, this originally was just. Um, okay, um, I'll tell that so it's easier. Okay. This was originally just uh, just that red pen, right? Um, then I was like, all right, I need to like bold these lines. Like the, the eyelashes should be a lot darker. So I went in with a black. The eyebrows should be bolded. The nose needs a little more definition because after I added the wash, you know, like it started getting blurry or whatever. Um, you know, the earrings, like this one, needs a little more definition. So you can actually see it because, you know, it's getting lost. Um, but every, it's a case-by-case -case thing. Um, and... As you're drawing every day, you start to learn these things. You start to figure it out. Um, you will not figure any of this out. This, none of this. You cannot do this. You <laughs> will not be able to do this until you start doing it. All right? You cannot ride a bike until you get on the damn bike and start riding it. I don't yeah. care. You're going to fall off a lot. A lot. And you're going to be bloody everywhere. Bring the Neosporin. Um, <laughs> okay? Side note. Side note. All right? Mom's not here to help you, kids, all right? And you know what? For all you guys who are like, I can't do it. Why can't I do it? Stop whining. Do it or it won't happen. It will not happen. You know the answers to all these questions. When you ask, how do I get better at this? You know the answer. You're just looking for, there's a story of a guy that went to the doctor, right? He went to 80 different doctors asking, doctor, why do I have heart problems? And every single doctor said, well, it's because you need to exercise and eat right. But then he goes to one doctor, and the guy's like, no, you're fine. Your heart's fine. And he takes that guy's advice? That's stupid. All right? <laughs> you hear, you keep hearing these things. I know you do. You go to Tim's thing. You go to my stream. You go to Ashley's stream. You go to... Just do it. Everybody's stream. And they tell you the same thing. But if you're not doing it, then you're just lying to yourself, and you're going to end up being a 37-year-old um, dude who doesn't do anything. And, I mean... That's, that's not you, though. Yeah, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. But <laughs> if you want to be an artist, then do the art. Do the arts. Thank you, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> just keeping it real. We're just a couple minutes over. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did you answer right. any other questions? I answered all of them. He did. <laughs> I was watching cops. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I saw the neighborhood. It looked kind of like mine. All right, so I'm going to switch this over a little bit because... The next two are going to be digital. No, I mean, so I put a Dropbox link. Never mind. We are going to have traditional. No, or no, get or Tyler's doing digital. I'm doing digital. Don't forget Unless to we want to do like the traditional first, and then we can switch over to digital. All right, let me move all this nonsense over. Oh, also, I put a link in the, in the doobly doo. The doobly doo. In the chat for the link to the. Oh, I got yours. Oh, did you get it? Mm-hmm. I'm on top of it. We got three more people. We got Tyler, Sean, and Key. Okay. There's the pen. And there's the glove. I have a glove. You get a glove? God, I feel like an anime character when I wear this thing. <laughs> I got the power glove. All right. Where is okay. Where is my file? Where oh, you mean that's like an actual... I thought yeah, you meant just a, the... That thingy. No, no, I meant the... Uh, it's in the Facebook chat. No. It's a Dropbox link. <laughs> oh, I got yeah, you. Okay. Smart. Yeah, buddy, yeah. So while we're loading this up... Everyone, this, oh, not the JPEG. I'm assuming you want the, <coughs> Probably the PSD. Yeah, the PSD. I'll download Tyler. that. So this Arizona is Tyler Florida. Johnson. He goes online as Sketch Geek. <laughs> <laughs> don't uh, call me TJ. Uh, well, don't call me TJ. I don't care. Birth name TJ. We call him Tyler. <laughs> my, birth name is T my birth name is TJ. <laughs> my friends call me Tyler. It's cool. Oh. <laughs> you can call me Sketch Geek. <laughs> but, but you can call me Sketch Geek. <laughs> <laughs> call, call me Kevin, please. Man, DJ. DJ, DJ. 
TJ. TJ's the DJ okay. up in this house. Okay, so you might need to make it a little bigger. Or if you need to pull it up, you just oh. use the handles on each side under. Oh. They're right. Right, right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, right. Whoa. Oh, oh my. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Smooth transition. Cool. Okay. So Tyler is going to be working on Chase, and he is working in Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, actually, you need Photoshop. the keyboard, don't you? I might. <laughs> you might need this. I mean, I could use it. Not necessarily. I don't know. I got these buttons over here. Do these things do anything? Ooh, ooh. You might have to turn touch off, though. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, and you might need to zoom in so they can see what you're doing. Oh, okay. And space bar is stuff. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Ooh. Oh, everyone's ooh, that lag. What? Oh. Uh, Chase is the baby of the swordplay group. Oh. Uh, yeah, so the theme essentially is... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I can't move the mouse. No, you're good. You're good. So the theme is essentially all the roommates agreed to do their interpretation of a character from my book, Swordplay. But the real topic today is talking about success and failure. So I'm asking each of my roommates how they have experienced it and how they overcame it and just what their opinion on it is. So now with Tyler... That's good. <laughs> uh, no, I, keep drawing. You're good. Oh, okay. All I'm right. So, looking, do you have a like a like a rectangular textured brush? Um. Anymore? Oh, here. Go to the drop down. Uh, oh, big. All right. Let's see what we got. What we got. What we got. Uh, that one. What's this one? What's this one? That looks good. Cool. Ooh. That work? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So to start off. What is your name and what is your occupation? My name is Tyler Johnson, a.k.a. Sketch Geek, a.k.a. TJ, a.k.a. TJ the DJ. Scooter McGillicuddy. A.k.a. Scooter McGillicuddy. <laughs> what we call him. What? Yeah, name. my closest friends call me that. <laughs> Scooter! Scooter. <laughs> uh, I am a freelance illustrator doing uh, artwork for board games. Um, games. And some card games. Anything on a tabletop that you play, essentially. Yeah. Um, I had a couple success. I was part of a couple success, yeah, successful Kickstarters. Uh, the latest one is a game called Lucidity, Six Sided Nightmare. I'm doing like a family friendly version of it because the core art is very gruesome and not child safe. Nope. Um, child not child safe. safe. Not safe for it's children. Not child proof. Not child proof. <laughs> um, so yeah. Well, and Ghostel. And Ghostel was uh, last year. Um, and then I did work for a game called uh, Legends of Draxia that was kickstarted last year, but they're coming out with an expansion. I only did anything for the expansion. Uh, and I don't know when that's supposed to come out. But, Beautiful. Yeah. And then third one is, well, before the, the hard-hitting question, oh, uh, what medium do you prefer and... <clears throat> I guess what are you going to be working on today? So essentially Photoshop today, but what medium do you prefer? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, Photoshop, I mean, obviously for most of my work is digital. Um, otherwise I like ink mostly. I like using brush pens. Um, if you check my Instagram, you can see them. I mean, if, you, if you're cool like that, <laughs> you don't have to be. That's cool too. Don't shameless promote yourself. Do it. Shameless. <laughs> Shamelessly. Oh man, this lag is cool. Okay. Um, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. I'd like to get into like other mediums, but maybe someday I will. So we'll start off with three of the hard hitting questions and we'll ask Oh we'll we'll see what it. questions uh, are being asked. <clears throat> so to start off, what does success look like to you? Success is well, it's a very it's an abstract um uh This is why we're asking it. Concept. It's an abstract concept that kinda re just resembles like the you know, a measurement of, like, achievements and wealth and stuff. But I think, to me, it's mostly if you can just enjoy what you're doing or, like, live off what you want to do. Um, so, like, most all of us here are somehow getting along by doing this. We get along somehow. <laughs> we, somehow. <laughs> s seriously, there's some months I'm just like, how did I even pay my bills? Um, and, yeah, so, like, but, like, I don't regret doing, like, I don't need to work for an office or anything like that, or at an office. I don't need a part-time job yet. Um, I'd say most people don't know you actually had a full-time job. Oh, yeah. I did a... I, <laughs> I, uh, well, okay, so 
uh, after college, um, I wasn't quite good enough to get a job, but I did do start doing caricatures at the local Six Flags, um, for, and that was actually like kind of cool. Like I actually enjoyed it because like my major was animation, and there's a lot of similarities in how you do caricatures, and like. The, the 12 principles of animation, the exaggeration, all that st type of stuff. So that was like, I was like really like um, thrown back by how much I actually enjoyed it. So I did that for about six years. Um, was it really six? It was like five or six, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So 2009 is when I did that. Um, I did two years in uh, Six Flags here. We got promoted and went, moved to Columbus, came back, and then I left to do work at a small indie game uh game studio called or it's it's by the it was um actually owned by uh the same guy who who created Rampage back in the day um if anybody's seen that in the arcades um it's yeah. a game I played back in the day but oh Rampage was great Rampage was great you played as giant monsters and you like wrecked the city yeah, it was awesome um unfortunately that that uh studio kind of went under after about a year and a half and then um, I kind of went back to characters. I actually, well, the reason I went back to characters is because I, I, I got a chance to go to Korea to do characters, and that was cool. So then I did that. Um, Tyler's an international renowned artist. I'm an international artist? <laughs> technically, you did work in Korea. I You're an did, international artist. Yeah, technically. Uh, um, Alan Green is asking. Oh, no, no. Sorry. I'm skipping ahead. How second, dare you? The second hard hitting question is what time have you felt the most successful? <clears throat> I'd say the the latest time was actually going to Gen Con because it's my mm. first time. Because even first of all, getting accepted um, was cool. Like, because like Gen Con's like my Super Bowl basically. Because <laughs> it's all about board games and it's the Super Bowl of board games. Let's say it's the Super Bowl of board games. Um, but the cool thing about that was I got to talk to um, a bunch of art directors, and um, I don't know if anybody in the, in the house has, has seen how excited I actually am to, uh, excited. I'm super excited, mm -hmm. because um, one, uh, I'm doing work for, I started to work for Rooster Teeth, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, dude, Cute. I'm doing, yeah, me and Key got approached at Gen Con, so I'm doing, I'm doing some, something for um, <laughs> Brewster Teeth, and then another company that I've been wanting to do work for uh, for past like three years or so, uh, called Plaid Hats. Uh, uh, I got in touch with them, and I'm gonna start a project for them in like October or something like that. So that's actually really exciting because like I've I've really wanted to work for them. Um, living the dream. So that's probably the 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 uh, most uh, relevant instant of when I felt successful. Well, then the third one is, how do you personally achieve success? Um, just not giving up, mostly. Because, like, <clears throat> it's really easy to get down on yourself and say you're like, oh, I'm just not good enough or whatever, but that doesn't do anything for you. That's literally non-productive. So you might as well be productive while failing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, actually. <laughs> Like, yeah, well, it's true, right? Because, like, you know, you're just going to be down on yourself. And then if you just don't do anything, then you're not doing anything. It's just that. No, it's true. Yeah, so be productive while failing, I guess. Is... Or, like, think about it while you're drawing. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I mean, that should motivate you. Because, like, yeah. you, can, you can look at you like, oh, I'm just working at, like, a fast food restaurant or whatever. I'm still just trying. But you're still trying to do it. Like, you're not... Like, just because right now you haven't found that success yet, it doesn't mean it won't... Like, if you keep trying, it'll happen. Like, it's just the nature of things. If you're passionate enough about it and you're actually uh, developing a critical eye for yourself and looking at yourself objectively, like, you, you, you're bound to succeed in one way or another. Yeah, I objectify myself all the time. I, <laughs> I, I, I objectify you too, but I don't want to tell you. <laughs> oh, man. Drop in the bucket. Uh, all right. Hot. So now, we'll get to some of these questions before asking the other three hard-hitting <laughs> oh, questions. Oh, oh, boy. 
Kind of softened it up. All right. uh, Alan Green says, any tips on getting work with board or card games? Um, I got started in board and card games actually by going to a forum called boardgamegeeks.com. There's a forum about for artists and designers. And I just posted my work there. And then the uh, uh, first company I did any work for was called Tinkerbots, and they are the ones that made Ghostel. And that was my first technically my first board game job and that was just like a it was an interesting experience like i came at it knowing it was going to be a learning experience because i didn't know i didn't really have a good idea of how much i should charge you know what like the real process is and like but they're also pretty new to it so we kind of learned together and so that just that just worked out really well and then i've gotten it's it's kind of weird i don't know how or why but people have contacted me because of I've gotten more other jobs because of that game. I thought it was just like a small town thing, but apparently, like it, it's actually pretty um, uh, recognized on on the forums. Because even the the guy from who runs Board Game Geeks, I've been told that he even knows who I am because of. Oh really? Because oh, apparently cool. he praised Ghostel because he liked it a lot. So like. Oh. So even, I did like everything. I did everything art. on that. That was actually that was pretty fun because I actually got to utilize characters into the game. So basically, everybody, all the cards in the game that have people on it are um, backers of the game. So I got to essentially make fun of all the people who. Um, <laughs> Thanks for giving me my money. <laughs> now I'm gonna make fun of you in the store. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was creepier than I intended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tishel says, I'm moving out soon and my mom is so upset that I'm taking the caricature you made of me Aww. with me. Aww. She wants to keep it herself. Aw, thanks, Tishel's mama. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, someone wants to know where you got your glasses from. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone was, like, they were asking me, I was like, oh, Tyler knows a really good place. All place. right. So I have a, essentially, like, five different glasses I switch between. So I get them at a place called zennyoptical.com. Um, this is going to turn into an advert real quick. <laughs> Can we be sponsored first? All right. All right. Send an email. <laughs> I will, if you guys sponsor me, I will pitch you guys all the time. You miss all the shots you don't yeah. take. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. It's like it comes back. Whoa. I have to take my own advice. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought I was just BSing my way through this. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, zenioptical.com. You just need to know, like, what your prescription is, which you can get for, like, 40 bucks if you go to a thing. Um, and make sure you get your uh, pupillary distance, which is the distance between your eyeballs or your pupils. And make sure it's correct. That will make it wobbly if you get it wrong. But, um, but yeah, that's where I get mine. And that was, sorry, that was from Christy asked that. And, yes, yeah, Chase is going blind. He should wear glasses as well. I don't know. If it would not help. <laughs> but it would be cute. He'd be kind of cute. With I'm just going to focus on his head, I think, just because. Yeah, cause and that way it's easier for them to see, too. Yeah, okay. Cool. We may have to scroll up a little bit. Well, I guess it's kind of like he's drowning in this white pool. <laughs> he's drowning in the void. Mm. Mm. Okay, hard-hitting so, questions. Ready for okay, the next three? Let's do this. All right, well, let me give you a timestamp. You got 12 minutes left. Oh, sweet. Okay. Sick, bro. Tyler? Yes. TJ? <laughs> Call me by my surname? <laughs> Sir Scooter? Scooter Scrum... Scooter Scrum Scoot. Scoot Maboot. What okay. does failure... Look like to you? Uh, somebody who plateaus and allows mm. themselves to plateau. I don't know if we've said that yet, but. Nope. I know, because I think we've been repeating a lot. I, th I feel like we share a similar opinion. Uh, that's the thing. I think like, with the definition of success and failure, it's, it's pretty, pretty much simple. simple. Yeah, it's like if you give up, essentially. It's probably what you guys already assume, but yeah. sometimes like you just need to hear it from people that are, artist, you know, artists in actually doing this for a living. I think it just kind of resonates in more of like, oh, yeah. I just have to do it. I just have to do it every day. Anyways, but what else does failure look like to you? So plateauing is something that we definitely talk about a lot. Yeah. Because I don't know how many artists I've unfollowed because they're just not pushing themselves. I don't know if they just don't realize it or they just they just kind of find success in what they did and um, they just don't feel a need to progress, I guess. Yeah. Um it's like, why do they need to when they've already made a living? Yeah, and like establish their style and. It's it's just a such a like a. 
it's kind of it's just kind of sad because like especially when like in college or whatever I find artists or even in high school I found like artists that I really liked and then like but they're all you also have this perception that they're better than you because they are at that time but once you your skill level rises if they don't if you meet them yeah. you don't really like you don't really have the same Respect. maybe I th- I feel like that's once you start close, but like, more. yeah, yeah, you see, like, oh, like they just they haven't grown mm-hmm. as much as I have, and then if you surpass them, then it's really disappointing because then you're like, well, you're my hero once. Because I don't know how you feel, but sometimes I think I appreciated people when I was younger based on their technical abilities, mm-hmm. and then as I got older, I was realizing they have done the same thing for the past ten years. Yeah. And then I see other artists which are kind of experimental and new. Yeah, technically it might be a little off or there's still work to be done, but it's exciting. Yeah, it's something like, I haven't seen before. You can see they're pushing themselves. Their journey is way more interesting now than the mm-hmm. person I used to follow. Because you can see the potential, especially when you're mm-hmm. older and you, like, they, you might not, they might not be at your level or the level that you, like, want them to be, but, like, you know they'll get there um, just based on, like, you see that one thing that really makes them them. And yeah. And... Yeah, it's like it's it's cool to see that. We, I don't know. We follow like there's a few artists that we met at Kansas here that I f- that like yeah they're not there yet, but like I'm following them because I can see where they're gonna go. And that's and exciting cool. for us. Mm-hmm. Like seeing other artists' journey, not only recognizing our own, but then seeing others that mm-hmm. intrigue intrigue us because then we get inspired from them. I feel like as we get <clears> older, sometimes it's harder to be inspired because things become less and less new. They yeah. become more and more familiar. So then when you see something that's like an anomaly, all of a sudden you're like, you gravitate to it. Yeah, it's like, it's you something you haven't seen and you're like, I, it's like finding a new TV show, really. It's like, I want to see where this goes. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. second hard-hitting question. Okay. When were, or describe a time when you felt most like a failure. Uh, usually, I mean, I've been fine now, but like, <laughs> basically every time like I, I'm in a money crunch. Which is basically at the end of every month. <laughs> uh, I mean, as a freelance artist, like, especially if you're not making money off of like your own stuff, like if, like I don't make that much money off of, like the things I do personally, but like most of my income or comes from getting work from other like employers. Um, so it's a little bit it's tough because if like if you have like a, a slow month, and you're like, oh god, am I gonna make it? Oh no! I, oh man! Oh jeez! Oh boy! But uh, so yeah, that was like I had a couple of dark times earlier this year because I was like I don't know. Like it's when I start contemplating if I do I need to get a part time job. That's that's the time when I'm like, Ugh. preach, <laughs> preach. Yeah, um, there were really dark times. The yeah. light bulb in his room actually did not work. It was it was rough, man. It was rough. 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 Um, yeah. Third hearted in question. Okay. How do you personally utilize your own failure? Um, kind of like what we said earlier is, is like just I don't I don't really want to look at anything as like a failure because I'm still trying, like I'm still going for it. So I haven't failed yet. So <laughs> on record, Tyler has never failed. I have never <laughs> failed yet. <laughs> never fail. Never fail. Right on the board. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Never well, like. Failed. <laughs> You'll never get me. Failure. Scoot never fail Johnson. <laughs> Scoot never fail Johnson. Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but but yeah, no, yeah, I like I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like I hope. Like but you're always learning. I'm always learning. I'm, yeah, I'm not like I, I unless if I give up. Like I mean, what Gabe says, like unless if you give up, then you haven't failed. Like you, you can have a bunch of failures, I guess, but. Like, you haven't failed as a whole. Like, I always look at the big picture of things. The big picture. It's true. It's like that. What's the... Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. It's like... I, like it's like, oh, I didn't... Like, I'll be honest. Like, I have never gotten a job that I applied for. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so bizarre. I didn't know no, that. Yeah, so... No, any, six flags. That's not... No, I mean, like, an art job. Like, oh. a, like an actual, like... My current career. Whenever I've applied to, like, uh, game... Like, video games, I've applied to... I've applied to a bunch of different, like, board game, indie uh, game groups and stuff. And, like, I've, I either got nothing back or, like, I 
they just go with somebody else. So any <laughs> any job that I like any job that I've applied for, I've de- I've never really gotten. Most of my jobs I I get from people coming to me cuz like then they don't have to like it's then it's on me. I have to decide if I want to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> But like that's that's also very uh far or far and few Few of, God, I always get those mixed up. It's so it's always few and far between is when that happens. Um, okay, yeah. You got your five minute ticker. Oh boy, I haven't done anything. You can do it. That's okay. You never fail. It's okay. Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't failed this yet. I've, um, Just okay. Keep winning, Tyler. I'm. Keep I'm only winning. You can't fail if you don't try. So just. Don't try. Don't yeah. Try. <laughs> My hair is on point today. <laughs> Uh, Miss Chibi Artist says, Tyler, do you have an online store like prints and stuff? Uh, I, I have an Etsy. Uh, I still need to update it with all my new color prints, but it's there. <laughs> it's just S, It's just uh, Sketch Geek, whatever the Etsy. Etsy. That one, yeah. Etsy.com slash shop slash Sketch Geek. Too many S's. Too um, many slashes. Too many slashes. Slashing prices. I know. Best deals. But yeah, I do have one. I just I haven't taken pictures and stuff of my new stuff that I have for sale because they're relatively that. they're really t- they're really new, so I haven't and I haven't really yeah I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we done here. <laughs> That's all my hard hitting questions I had. All right, who, so you have a statement you want to put out like Gabe was. <laughs> just do it, yeah. God. Okay, okay, uh, maybe I do have something else. Um. Something I did when I was training characters is, like, I'd get people like, oh, Tyler, how do I draw a car? And, or, how, hey, how, you know, how do, I, how do I do this? Or, like, how do I draw this thing? I'm like, just do it. Like, that's all I usually tell them. Like, how do you think a car looks? Draw it. And then if you, regardless of how it turns out, you're going to learn something from it. Like, so, like, so tagging on along what uh, Gabe says, you just go for it. Regardless of what, it doesn't matter if, you, if it's good or bad. Just go for it, learn what you can, and then do better the next time. Actually, you know what this reminds me of is when we were having the discussion about uh, when studies become actually harmful. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't know what a car looks like, you can do like hundreds of studies of like little parts of it, but just go for it and actually draw the car. Yeah, like, you, like you're not... Don't break it down into like this... I, like I, nobody's ready to be a parent, you just have one. Exactly. <laughs> just have a child. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people no, plan for <laughs> Nobody's, but <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's true. It's like yeah. even my brother. He's like he he had a kid, but he, like you're never truly like ready to have. A, you don't know until it happens. Yeah. So you just use protection. Use protection. <laughs> don't have a child. That's the. But I never fail. So. <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> Man. All right. Um. Uh, what, were, what, were, what were we talking about? <laughs> uh, when studies become. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like if you're doing a study, make sure you're either mentally noting or actually you could probably even like write down what you're learning as you do them and apply the, or, or even just yeah. looking at a reference and then applying it to a completely different thing because if you're just copying, you're not learning anything. You're just going through the motions. Don't you're just a machine. And you're yeah, not you're learning. You're not actually anything. thinking. No, you point. just you need to keep your brain on when doing studies. Um, that's why, I, like, I never, I usually, whenever I draw something, especially if I don't know what it is or how to, like, if I don't have, a, I've never done it before, I always try to draw it first, and then look at reference and then fix mm. my mistakes. Um, because, yeah, that's uh, I mean, I think you guys did a stream, the blind, the test. blind test. Yeah, that was. Um, so that's kind of what. I do. He has white eyes, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, they're like light gray. Oh, he's perfect. All right, whatever. I'm okay, gonna... you got you got one minute. Oh, snap. how much can you get done in one minute? Okay, I'm gonna put a scenery here. Um, <laughs> just gonna put <laughs> a background. Backdrop. Okay, you're gonna have mountainscape. Here we go. <laughs> you're gonna have some floating islands because every fantasy landscape has floating islands. Yeah. Dust scrubs. Obviously. And then and then you put a giant monolith in the background, and that's that's your that's your center point. Um, you're learning. I'm going to have a YouTube video about this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Boom. And then, you, and then you put some, like, you got to have the atmospheric perspective. 
up in here, you know, you just... You, yeah, boom. And then you put some <laughs> put some clouds. Um, and then and then you put a dragon, because... Because dragons. Because dragons, man. Zombie dragons. Zombie dragons. It's in right now. Spoiler alert. Shut up. I didn't say of what. We know. <laughs> 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 yeah, you cannot you cannot believe the zombie dragons that happen in that show. It's crazy. Carl. It's like Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. Uh, and that's it. And that's it. You know, that's Yay. how you draw anything. Perfect. You put a let's put a floating city. In it's there. funny. It's I always feel like the hardest challenge when <laughs> streaming is realizing like you're like oh half hour I can get so much done like even with my sketch I was like oh my god I barely even got. Yeah. Or like face it in time. Well, kind of. It also kind of sucks. I think because you have OBS and everything going on, that it, it like lags really bad. Oh, I know. And so like, that's I. I'm not used to that at all. So I don't know how you do it on streams, but I bottle my frustration and then let it out on a subway sandwich. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the real reason we go to subway every day. <laughs> all right, but, but here's Chase ish, kind of. <laughs> Thank you, Thailand. Oh. I want to scan it though. Oh. My legs. Just want to show you can finish stuff. And it was like that, guys. See, look, Ashley. Hold on, I gotta turn on my camera again. Ashley yeah, was yeah. able to finish her little bowl drawing. Ooh. He's a cutie little girl. I finished it. Cutie patoot. I want to scan him though, and then you can have him. Aw, thank you, you, Ashley. Did you Wait, no, no, no. I gotta put up the camera again. This is to show you can do things in a small amount of time. Fear nothing. Yes, yeah, suckers. Just do it. You're the world. But Here's you're Ash's jacket. little bow drawn. <laughs> what? You're the world. Oh, you're, you're the world. You're the world. So, see, this is where you should up the contrast. It looks pretty close. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, baby. Look at that little guy. He's got a butterfly on his nose. Oh, little fuzzer buddy. The next there we go. The next There's a little bow. Oh, he's so cute, Ashley. Thank you. He's I'm a so really good. cute design character too. <laughs> Got a little pig leg. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Do you want me to watch? Who's next? Oh, okay. So next up is Sean Price. Sean Price. It's me. Oh wait. There you go. Sorry. Okay. I have your reference on a different thing. Oh, all right. Well. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Look at this oh, little guy. Look at that little guy. Everyone's right. screaming Sean yeah. in the chat. Sean, Sean, Sean. Sean, Sean, Sean. Sean, Sean. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Oh, I lifted this up. Owen's your number one fan. Owen, oh, this one goes out to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you need to... Here, I'll set up for you. I'm like Minecraft proud of this person. <laughs> Mr. Swoosh himself. I'm serious. I'm like you Minecraft proud right, you said. person. Oh, <clears throat> oh boy. Okay. Let me get my chair. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay. Everyone, welcome to the stream. Sean Price. Better known online as art slash off slash I'm price. I'm so excited. We're doing this again. We don't know. Hey, we're doing, we're doing yeah. this again. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> we don't normally do this. Uh, I just met him. We just met. <laughs> we're, we're super chummy guys. Okay. So, Sean, would you please introduce yourself and what is your occupation? And I feel like you have a very unique occupation right now. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. He's a Catan player extraordinary. Yeah, I'm super good at Catan. Um, no. Uh, to me. What was, what was your name? Uh, my name is Sean Price, um, and uh, I am a uh, independent artist and also a tattoo artist as well. So. Independent artist. Etc. Etc. Et 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 yeah. And That's about it. So what mediums do you prefer, and what character are you doing, and in what media? Uh, I do everything in pencil. Everything is done in colored pencil, and it's either blue or green or red or anything like that. I use uh, Prismacolor Color Race pencils. Um, and I really enjoy them. And uh, the character that I'm doing is Nate. Um, 
Yeah, I'm doing Nate, and I don't know anything about Nate. So what is about Nate? Uh, he's like the <laughs> rebel child. I always, whenever anyone at a con asks about him, because I have his print for sale, I usually say he's like the Zuko character. So the one that has kind of a trouble upbringing, but you can tell he has like good undertones. He's, he's just in a... bad situations, and he continues to make bad choices because he doesn't have anyone influencing him he's in a... the right direction. So I think he's one of those characters here where it's easy to kind of fall in love with this type of character, and you just want to see their growth over the journey. And I think that is my Nate for this character. I like Nate. I think he's a good guy. He's a good. He's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Do you I see the little bunnies that I put on him? I thought those were mice. No, those little bunnies. That's actually he's in the gang battered bunny, so it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. You can't mouse those bunnies. There's a bunnies. I got big old ears. <laughs> Ooh. It needs a tail. Oh, a did the? <laughs> I have a the thing shoot Sean's up. Levels. It's more like a chinchilla. All right, well, so okay. hit the thing. So I'm going to hit you with the three hard-hitting questions first. Okay. And then we'll go on to some of the community questions. Okay. All right, so the first one is, Sean, what does success look like to you? Success? Um, it's something of where you, you kind of wake up and you're just happy with yourself and what you do. Yeah, that's honestly like what it is. I mean, like I don't, I, I, I try not to measure success like financially and everything like that. I try not to uh, measure it off of you know a social status or like where you are or you know or what you do for a living. It's always just like, are you like, did you wake up happy with who you are, and then um, and just do you just like what you're doing? <laughs> and if you're content with that, not content. Content isn't the right word, but. Um, if that's just something that you just enjoy, that to me is just like success. You wake up in the morning, you see Sean in the mirror, you did it good. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely uh, perfect. Tigel says, Sean, if Tim bullies you too much, let me know. I, I'll come over there and beat him up a bit. Oh. I'm glad that the perception is that because he is horrible to me. <laughs> <laughs> just I have never in my life actually known what bowling was until Sean. Until I showed up. Yeah. And I tricked you. Yeah, like look. Do I you came about. Do you hear him right now? Oh, cute and oh, he's this little Jersey kid. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> no. I tricked you, and I came about, and you were all just like, "Oh, yo, he's got to move in. He's got to move in." And I'm just like, Tim is a poopy poop. <laughs> <laughs> all I hear every day John's of my life. Tim's life. One day at a time. Okay. Yeah, one day at a time. Anyways, uh, Cactus says, "Okay, now tattoo Nate on Tim." Honestly, I don't ever see myself getting a tattoo, but if I ever did, I would want Sean to be the one that tattoos it. I'll tattoo oh. you. I'll that tattoo you. It'd be a good time. Yeah, write a fan Sean. fiction, please. It's a good one. And if you want to read the current fan fictions about Sean and I, they are... <laughs> <laughs> uh, second hard-hitting question. Yes. When it, when, name a time where... Or actually... Describe any time you felt the most successful in your life. C2E2. I'm not even kidding. Seriously? Yeah, when I was at C2E2, that was when I was in a really, really rough spot. And I um, I had to draw because I use my hands. Um, but uh, Yeah, see if you can actually finish your drawing. No one has done that on the stream yet. No. Oh, well, you think I'm going to do that one? You could um, be. I believe in you. You could be, but Tyler never fails. Um but anyway, so uh, C2E2 is when I was in a really, really rough spot in life, and I came out to C2E2, and I showed, that was the very first time that I just showed my drawings to, like, people in that setting, especially to people that I looked up to, like, at the time, like, I was really, really into uh, Mouse Guard, and I showed uh, David Peterson my stuff, and I, ba- I walked away with doing a commission for David Peterson. Um, and then I also met these guys here, and what happened is that Ashley... Uh, ended up, <laughs> ended up buying an original from me that I showed her, um, and I thought it was just like I was like, whoa, was like, you can actually make this happen. I don't know, and I walked away. I I was so happy um, at C2E2. I thought it was really really great uh, from meeting you guys and just having that experience. Who would have ever known it? It's all downhill from there. All downhill, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything. Okay, third hard hitting question. How do you personally achieve your success? How do I personally achieve it? Mm-hmm. Um, being consistent. Uh, being consistent and making sure that, like, no matter how, like, you know, 
bad you think of yourself or like how, th- how like bad you think your art is or anything like that or just going through those days where you just like you you just feel like you can't do it you just do it like you literally just you, you just you know what no like that's not what I need right now that's gonna stop me and then you be consistent and you just keep just making stuff you gotta keep making stuff so yeah yeah okay um oh I gotta update it so that you're not Tyler Sketch Geek. Sean never gave me a PNG to put on the stream, so he doesn't get one. I didn't either. Neither did Key. <laughs> Neither did Key. So, sorry guys. Okay. You'll never know where we're we going. Bring the next from. three questions. Are you ready? Uh, sure. Sean, what does failure look like to you? And if you say me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think failure, uh,. It looks like pretty much like just someone who just isn't doing what they want to do. Or just, actually, you know what? This is what failure is. Um, oh, God, I said, you know what? That's when I start a rant. So here I go. Here's what failure here is. It's someone who Click. constantly is blaming everything else around them when, like, nothing good happens to them. And that's a really, really, really dicey subject. But, yeah, it's a really, really dicey subject, but... I don't think it is. It comes to, yeah, it comes to a point to where you, you have this person and they're not pushing themselves. They're not going any further. They're not, and, they're, and they keep being like, why? Why is this? Why aren't I getting this? Why aren't I doing this? Why aren't I doing this? Why aren't I doing this? Why aren't these things happening to me? And if it happens in a consistent manner, and if it keeps happening over and over and over and over and over again, maybe... You should really just like sit there and be like, you know what, maybe it has something to do with me. Look internally and be like, you know what, maybe this is something that I need to fix. Maybe maybe I need to fix any type of like any type of situation that I have going on in my head right now. Maybe that's what it is. May change a mindset, change anything like that. So failure is something to where or like someone or what was the question? <laughs> really? It was some, what is what does failure look like or anything like right that? Now? Yeah. Uh, what does failure look like to you? Yeah, it's 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 someone who is constantly just not looking internally to see if they're the actual problem of what's going on. It's like what I was talking about earlier with the whole cat realizing that I was the problem. I wasn't engaging with the customers. I wasn't looking like someone that you'd want to approach at a con. Yeah, yeah. But for the longest time, I was blaming art. I was blaming mm-hmm. the uh, what I thought people wanted. And yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. Okay, second question, or fifth, technically. Times that you felt most like a failure. Um, it's times when I allow, uh, when I allow basically kind of um, anxiety and like fear basically win, and I have those days where uh, I don't try anything new. Like I'm constantly just yelling at myself like in my head and stuff like that and just kind of doing that and when and, and tim i'm yelling <laughs> at tim um and it's just it just letting those thoughts like get to me and i mean you've seen i've been i've had days where i've walked around and not been at my desk i've just walked around i've just paced i've been on the floor i've been over there and everything like that and those are the times where like in my head like i'm literally just like freaking out and um to me, like that—that's honestly when I feel like a failure because I know that I'm allowing those thoughts to win. Yeah. But what about a specific time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was yeah, this was one thing that I also wanted to talk about uh, as well, and it was similar to what Ashley said too, um, to where uh, Ashley and I were in like very like sought after careers. Ashley worked in games. I worked in tattooing. Um, you know, this is something where a lot of people, like, when they see and they know that I'm a tattoo artist and they look at me, you know, they're like, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, like, how did you become a tattoo artist? How did you do this? Um, and, and I, you know, I give them the information and everything like that, but the longer that I was in tattooing and the longer, um, you know, I started to, like, just draw and just have fun with drawing and start to realize that, like, maybe tattooing wasn't for me, the longer I actually felt that my success in tattooing actually felt like a failure to me. Uh, Because I wasn't doing Mm -hmm. what I was supposed to do. Um, And uh, it just kind of like, it it was something that just really, really, really hurt, you know, Um, where every day I kind of just sat there. I wasn't, I wasn't working on things that I wanted to work on. I wasn't doing this. I wasn't doing that. 
Um, but like I, I, you know, I, I, I was a successful tattoo artist. I was, um, you know, and like, I can still, you know, I, I can still like dip back into that and be like, okay, yeah, you know, and, and, you know, I'm not going to go and, um, not take it seriously. Of course, you know, I mean, you're tattooing somebody, you have to take, you have to take it seriously. Um, but, uh, Get this V-neck out of here. You do want a V-neck? <laughs> oh, wait. All right, you wanted this one? I think you just got prone to drawing yourself. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think I literally just drew myself. Um, but anyway, so, uh, but yeah, it just, it, it turned into me basically just, once again, letting those thoughts win um, and feeling like a failure when actually, like, I was, you know, I was, I was successful in tattooing and it, it sucked. It, it really sucked. Um, so it wasn't until, you know, I went to, I went to C2E2 and started to realize, uh, you know, I met you guys and, you know, I was able to show my work and people really, really reacted to it in such a good way that, and it was just artwork. It wasn't tattooing. It wasn't, you know, I didn't finish a tattoo and, and everything like that. And it was just my artwork. That's when I was just like, oh man, I was like this, like this feels really nice. Like this is what, this is what I want, you know? Um, and yeah, so that, that's that, that's how that goes. Yeah. One more. And we'll get some of these questions that people are asking here. Yeah, it's rocking out. How do you personally utilize your own failure? Um, <laughs> uh, I always feel that my career as an artist in tattooing and also this too um, has built partially on spite. As in the, in the, yeah, I know. And it's more of where you have the people and they say you can't do it. And so having those thoughts sit in he, in my head that basically like they, you know, they sit there and they're just like, oh yeah, like you're a failure. Oh, maybe you can't do it and everything like that. I get so mad and I get so stubborn that I'm just like, you know what? No, no, I'm going to do it. I'm literally going to do it. Um, and it's lit and it turns into like, when we've talked about that before, it is actually a motivator. You do like you get into, and it, it's not a healthy motivator. People I don't. Know. Yeah, please don't. Uh, please don't build anything off of spite. Um, but there, there comes a point in your head where you just get so just aggravated and so mad that you're just like, you're just like, you know what? Like, no, like I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. And you just, and you knock it out and, and you make it happen. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, okay. no problem. No, I I didn't realize I was gonna get so like real talking on the stream. I thought we the, were gonna have like a oh, you it know, could get real. Like a yeah, oh yeah, we could get super real. Yeah, but like I didn't realize you know uh, that, so I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that to you people. Well, we have some community questions. You ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, altered mage asks when do you feel that way when people ask for critiques on work in progresses? I find a lot of people use the excuse. It's not done yet to rebuttal a non sugar coated response. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I feel like I, I, well, you go, you go. Um, please, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. Pl yeah, yeah, please repeat the question because I just, um, honestly, when someone asks me for a critique and it is a work in progress, I feel like it's very obvious. I don't need them to state it's a work in progress or it'll get better or any of these. You're right. I, to me, those are defense mechanisms where you it's like if you're going to show a work in progress just show it don't say anything they know it's a work in progress yeah. and then it's almost like by saying well it's a work in progress or it'll get better blah blah it's almost like you don't want a lot of That's, harsh feedback well it's almost like you want it to be super critical you're putting a cushion in between their yes. critique you know to where so somebody like comes in they give you the critique and you're like wait wait wait, wait. no 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 um like it's not done yet and it's like like, like I, i'm assuming the person critiquing it Hopefully they could see that. Um, oh, they, they will. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's why whenever I give my stuff up for critique, honestly, just give it. They yeah. know it's a work in progress, and usually what I do is I say and grill it. I'll be like, tell me everything that you see that's wrong. Because you don't want a sugar-coated critique that doesn't help you. It doesn't make the other person feel good because then they feel like they're obligated to say nice things to make you feel better. When really, if the true... You know, the whole point of a critique is to better the piece. Yes. You want as the best critique that you possibly can receive. And if you're muddling it with these words and by saying it's a work in progress, I don't feel like you're going to get the best critique you possibly can. True. Very true. Okay, next question is from John Miller. 
says, how do you find what is keeping you from success when you feel you're always looking for what's causing failure? Ooh. Um, that's a really, really good question. That's and good question. I honestly think that is like, it's the constant, like you're, if you're constantly thinking of failing, it's having that mindset of like, no, it, it, you, you kind of rebuttal it. And it goes back to what I said yeah. to where it was just like, no, I'm not going to fail. And you keep doing it and you keep doing yeah. it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And then really like success. Cause that's the thing. Like, I don't like, I never, like th there is a part of me that, that has sat there and be like, okay, like, yes, I want to be a successful artist. I want to be this. I want to be this, but I never like measured it at all like I never really you know got into of being like oh yeah you know like this is this is what it's gonna be and everything like that it was always just I don't ever want to be a failure <laughs> that's really what it is you know and there's times where like I feel like I have you know I have failed or you know um in life but it always comes back to being like I don't ever want to fail myself like to let myself down yeah uh, Owen says, how do you keep a positive flow slash mindset when diving into a new piece? Um, yes, Sean, how do you keep a positive flow? Oh boy, mind? oh boy. Um, actually, you know what, you know what I do, um, really to keep a positive mindset is I constantly go and I try and inspire myself, like, like, or inspire myself by looking at, you know, uh, people that I like or people, mm -hmm. um, you know, artists that I like or, or things that I like and constantly just keeping just that like excited feeling in you you know of just being like oh yeah. man like like you know you go and look at like this person's piece or you go and look at this person's piece or you go out and you go into nature and you do something and everything like that so it's always like constantly just trying to keep that excitement up and keep those bad thoughts at bay yeah um oh and then i do think surrounding yourself with people that are positive absolutely helps. yeah yeah Christy says, Sean, I'm not sure how tattooing mentorship works, but how do I get a mentorship? I don't even know where to start. Um, or do you even need one in tattooing, she says. You do. I, I would. Most people that go into tattooing and they don't have any type of apprenticeship or mentorship or anything like that, they don't become very successful because they're doing all the wrong things in tattooing. Tattooing is very technical um, to where you have to, like, you know, you have to constantly, like, it's... You have to constantly like keep track of a lot of things that you're doing. It's almost like if like let's say um, this is gonna sound really weird, but all right. Hmm. So let's say you're playing a game and you all do a lot of like menu management. A lot of it, kind of look at it that way, to where it's like it's a very technical thing, and you're just kind of just sitting there and you're like, okay, cool. Like, is this going like this? Is this going like this? Is this going like this? And then you have to be artistic on top of that, or like have like an artistic th like thought on okay. top of that. It's like playing chess, to where you're just three steps ahead of yourself all the whole time. But anyway. Um, so to, to go about and getting a tattoo apprenticeship, um, you go, uh, pretty much you go to like shops around your area and everything like that. Um, you go and you look for, uh, you look for artists that you've liked, you look through portfolios and make sure, you know, that it's work that kind of res not resonates with you, but looks, um, looks good. And a lot of it's really hard and that's kind of like educating yourself on what a good tattoo is. Um, I could talk about that for hours. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that one, but, uh, a lot of it is going about and educating yourself on what a good tattoo is. Make sure you go to shops that, you know, that you like, that you like to be around. The people are nice. They're not dickheads or anything like that. Sorry for swearing. Um, and, <laughs> um, and, uh, and then after that you go and you show them your work. And so you're probably going to hear, and if you go about and you do that, you're probably going to hear no a lot. And you say, like, hey, like, I want an apprenticeship. Do you guys need an apprenticeship, like, an apprentice around here? Like, I'm, I'm willing to do this for you. Um, so you go, show your work to them, and uh, draw things that are tattooable, um, things that, like, people want, things that are in right now in the whole tattooing thing and stuff like that. Because um, when you do get into tattooing, that's most likely what you're going to be doing. I mean, you're not, you know, you're going to be in there and you're going to be doing things that, um, yeah, you're going to be doing things that, that are uh, stuff that you don't normally want to do or something like that. Um, but, I mean, you know, you, it, it, it's, still, it's still fun either way. Um, so, yeah, go to each shop, um, show them your work as much as you can, and just keep going to shop to shop. And then the one that kind of hits you with that maybe, keep coming back to them. Keep showing them that, you're, that you want this. Keep being active and wanting it and everything. So that's how it goes. It's a lot of trial and error, a lot of luck. Real talk is best. Real talk. Cool. 
I'm glad, man. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you guys like expected me to come in here and be, you know, funny Jersey accent Sean and everything like that, but man, I didn't realize I was going to get all real talky, man. I didn't mean to. Sort of. I was going to say, this, I feel like this is still pretty good. Is it good? Of, yeah. Okay. I got nervous. I'm nervous for a second. I didn't know what to do. I mean, do you want to get real talk? No. <laughs> no, no, no. You save that for like a casual stream or something. Okay. Um, I'll take Mason's stubbornness for the win. Competition I find helps drive me personally out of art funks or blocks. Good. That's that's. I, I definitely think competition is a, is a good thing. It's a healthy dose of competition. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if some of you caught Key's stream last night. <laughs> Uh, but I totally lost at a game of Catan the other day and yesterday, yesterday, uh, last night. And I was like, I'm not a sore loser. I don't care. And then all of a sudden Tim sore was all loser. making, Tim was all making jokes. And that was when it hit me. And I was like, no, I was like, this isn't how it works. I was going to win. I was, was going to that was a real jerk. Like, after we <laughs> yeah. I was like, Sean, I really enjoyed playing that game with you. <laughs> Better luck next time. He's like, all oh, right. He just like went off. I'm like, you need to leave. Like, get out of here. <laughs> hey, you hit me. <laughs> In the heart strings. Yeah, that's not the case. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did not hit One day you. he'll get better, but not, not soon. I mean, it's just experience. It's like art. To get better at Katani, he's got to play more. He's got to keep playing it. He doesn't believe me that rock is the most valuable resource. <laughs> <laughs> this became a Catan stream now. <laughs> These are my tips. Yeah. Go for rock. I think it's the most valuable resource. My winning percentage is like 70 to 80%. Okay, great. great. Uh, anyways, Move on. Gypsy says, you're still the longest road in our hearts, Sean. Thank you, Gypsy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was stolen from me. <laughs> After we got in a bait on how long, I never go for longest road because I feel like it's a losing game. He got it. He was really proud of it. And then he lost it before the game ended. <laughs> or if he was just focused on cities. <laughs> uh, Owen says, but clay, Tim. I mean, brick. <laughs> I would say brick is like... Third. That's what I thought. I thought brick was. Third I thought of, brick was the most valuable. I'd say brick is third. Yeah, brick is third. And then wood, and then sheep's the least valuable. Alter says sheep stockpile is the best way to win. I, you know, agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm with you. Some people play to have fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see if I can find a real question. Yeah, sorry, one. sorry. We got off topic. Tangent. Oh, here's a good one. Don't forget to put at CG Cookie Concept before their questions, though. From Carl, Alt says, You honestly think success can be split into different parts of your life, like professionally, or professional success, spiritual success, personal life success, or success... Just an expression of how much you change and grow as a person. I personally yeah. think the last is more accurate. Um, the last one I think is I think is the most important, at least to oh, yeah. me, in my opinion. Yeah, is how you grow as a person and, and you know and how um, it, it's really like if you're comfortable with yourself, if you're happy with yourself. I, I think a lot of it has to do with the internal. I think yes, you can split everything into different categories. I think you should split everything into different categories to where your um, you know, where you think of it as, like, yes, you know, like, I'm successful career-wise. You can be successful career-wise, like I was in tattooing, but I wasn't happy. So I didn't feel successful. Um, technically, from the outside point of view, people would look at me and be like, he's a successful guy. He does what he does. Oh, my God, it's so good. You know, and I appreciated it, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. Um, but, so, yeah, I mean, you can literally split everything. Stop looking. I get nervous <laughs> when you look. Well, you got two minutes. Well, I... I'm, I'm just whatever. Here. I feel like you did good for a half hour. <laughs> I was well, like, a, <laughs> just, I feel like you did. I, I know that time is good. a big constraint that I you think, usually yeah, stress I feel out like you about. Did good. He utilizes time well. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, Sean, right? it's good. It's cute. Sean, great. <laughs> no. <laughs> good. We, we, we all like we all pat him on the back. Good job, Sean. Oh, uh, you're so Sean, you're doing Sean, so, so good. Doing so well. You put the pencil to the paper. Thanks, you. Hey, man. That's what you got to do. Yeah, if there's anything that's what you got to do, yeah. It's been reoccurring. Just do it. 
Actually, I am somewhat proud of you right now. You actually finished something in a half hour, and you like you utilized your time well while talking. Which I feel like when you stream and talk, usually it, there's a lot of like hand gestures my hand. and that's looking up. That's the thing. That's the well, thing. Like, here with, we go. With, okay, that's the thing with these. No, with, with no, that's the thing. Like with these cats on here, is they want me to stream, and they're all like, "Yo, like you should totally stream and have a good time." I would. I wouldn't get anything done, guys. Like we would just like we would just talk. <laughs> Like that's all we would do. We would just go back and forth, and we would talk all day, and and that's yeah. That's the thing is, I gotta get better at it. Um, but man, 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 do, do it. it. You just gotta do it. Yeah. They said you can do it. Gypsy said, but if you really liked it, you'd put it on the fridge. Oh, 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 oh I don't guys. <laughs> Uh, do you have any closing statements? Um, yes. Uh, and if you're someone who feels that they have any type of anxiety disorder, any type of mental illness, any type of anything like that, if you're someone who relates to that, if you're someone who's actually been diagnosed with that, um, do not let it run your life. Do not, like, try your best. Try your best in everything in your life when it, when it comes up to not use it as a way of either getting out of something or you know not doing something or anything like that because the only way that you're going to break it is if you face it head on. And that's it. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, that is it. That's totally it. Yeah, hey! Thank you, Sean. <laughs> I just want to say I got two tea bags in one package. Hey. Ashley got two tea bags in one package. <laughs> Let's talk about success for a second. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about success. Real success. <laughs> Real success. Thanks for listening to me, everybody. Okay, everyone. Okay. Here comes Key. Before Ooh. I steal everything. Oh, gosh. There's a lot with keys. Yeah. Apparently, this is the main event. <laughs> we have to have a lot of yeah, things transported the over. Sorry. The headliner. Yeah, he's the headliner. What did you have, Key? I, had, I got Christina. So, this is... Uh, well, this is Gawky online, and or as Key. Oh. And she will be doing... Ooh, I like the pre-sketch. She Better. will be working on my character, Christina, which is usually known for the one with the really long, flowing Blow hair. Blow her. You know what? These white things are so reflective now. Whoa. There we go. No, that's perfect. There we go. Thank you, Sean. Guys. You're great. Just get ready for Subway in a half hour. Hello, okay. Everyone, welcome to the stream. Key. <laughs> uh, Key is the last one that is going to be streaming today, and she's going to end it off. So, Key, can you please state your name, your occupation, the mediums prefer, okay, and what you're going to be on, doing today? Oh. One thing at a time. Okay. <sighs> My name is Key. I go by Gaki online, but my full name is Key Klein. But you know that's kind of boring. But anyway, uh, my occupation is. You talk a, louder than that, Key. I'm an independent artist. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, I mostly try to work on my personal work, and sometimes I'll do freelance because I have to to pay stuff off. Um, mediums. Oh, what? What mediums oh. do you prefer? And what one are you going to be working on today? Uh, I prefer pencil and digital, but I'm working gouache because I like to go crazy and do new things. This is literally a version of, like, how to achieve success. Key wanted to try gouache for a while. I feel like you've been putting it off. I know. So it's like, she's going to jump into it today. And you're probably going to see some experimentation, but this is good. Yeah, because I have no experience, really, in this medium at all. So here we go. Here we go. I'm not even adding gouache to it yet. Um, Jay Brisby says, how can you call yourself a real artist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the answer? That's it. I feel like um, the best way that I've always explained of what, how can you actually call yourself an artist is the one that Marina Abramovic says, who's like my favorite performing artist. And she says, if you wake up every day and you have this desire to create, you have this like want to mm -hmm, get an mm -hmm, idea out mm -hmm. of your brain and put it in some kind of form, Matt, whatever that might be then you know you're an artist. If you don't have this like daily inspiration or something where if you don't draw it or if you don't create it, like it actually pains you mm -hmm. and like you, that's all you think about, 
I mean, you'll know if you're an artist. This is the life I know, and I know no other life, so here we are. Art life. Um, oh, Chrissy says, so many people on our stream want to know how she looks. Vogue. <laughs> Fashion. 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 Um, okay, so while you guys think of questions for Key, I'm going to hit you with these questions. Okay. So you keep working. All right, I'm working. And you, okay. Key. Yes. What does success look like to you? Uh, someone who has a palette knife, because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> you want success? Get a palette knife. Right now, order online, Amazon.com. Okay, okay. Um, the actual answer is... Oh, Key found her success. Yeah, found it. Um, being able to afford the cookies that you like. Key. Yeah. No. There you go. Okay. Um... I think it's being able to wake up and being happy with what you're doing. Like, I don't want to wake up and hate my job. I think it's basically just being able to be enjoying what you're doing every day, even if it's hard or something. You live in doing what you like. Boom. Success. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy says, I love your nail color key. I love it. <gasps> Thank you color of eggs and the painting paints I'm going to use it's a today. wonderful goodwill purchase. Oh yeah. Thanks Tim. Okay. Key. Yes. What times have you felt or give me a time when you felt the most successful? The most success. Uh, the most success. Um, I think now is a pretty good time. Like I actually feel like I'm in a place where I'm very happy. I'm doing a lot of the things that I've always wanted to do. Or at least right now, this is everything I've ever wanted to do. Um, the <laughs> it's a good time it's, right now. It's like being able to see your hard work pay off. Sorry, I'm mixing paint. I'm not actually painting right now. Um, but like just seeing... Um, progress in your own work and um, maybe people are seeing that which okay so the big thing right now was my Twitter blew up and I'm just like I <laughs> doubled how many followers I had and I'm just like shaken up by how much people really responded to just little simple unicorn drawing I did and it makes me so excited that people can enjoy something that, you know, as a kid, um, I loved unicorns. I read a bunch of silly unicorn books, but then I, I stopped. Like, I stopped, like, my passion because, you know, when you're in middle school and you're reading books about unicorns, I just dropped my paintbrush, <laughs> um, no one's going to treat you very well, you know? But now I'm doing something that little kid me would have really enjoyed. And I feel like that's a success in itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny is as you were mixing, I'm like, oh, it's a perfect hair color. <laughs> like you went right for this. I was like, oh. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> I'm very curious to see where this one goes. I have no idea where it's Well, because Key's color palettes are always so intriguing. I don't know what I'm doing. I get lucky to be sitting next to you every day. <laughs> um, the next one. Oh. That's a success story. Sitting next to oh. Key. <laughs> That's how I knew I felt successful. I got to sit next to this. Great. <laughs> I have to sit next to you. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know how you got the short end of that stuck. Um, next one is, how do you personally achieve success? Um, keep going. Um, like even through the rough times, I had really rough times. Um, I feel like that's something people don't know enough. Like usually every big name artist have gone through some kind of rough patch that like motivated them in some way. Yeah. Um, how do you achieve success? It's a lot of just believing in yourself and knowing like, okay, I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to die someday. And I'm going to make sure I do this thing before I die. And that's kind of my biggest motivation. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my answers are really simple and sweet, and I don't really have much <laughs> to really like expand on. Okay. Then we're going to the next three. <laughs> <laughs> really? Man, not, I mean, none of the other roommates did. I don't see why you don't know. Oh. All right. What does failure look like to you? Failure looks like completely giving up and not doing what you want to do. You're just accepting everything that's around you and not trying to do anything about it. Um, it's just kind of living life um, just without... I have words for it. I guess it's just like kind of going, going with the flow, and that's it. Yeah. You're not pushing yourself to do anything you're just coasting and not trying to better yourself as a person yeah i feel that um really quick i'm gonna throw this one in here for you tisro oh. says it's not really a question but i want to thank you it's mostly because of her that i got really motivated to completely revamp my twitch and starting oh. later today i'm gonna start streaming regularly oh, so thank yay. you Key. I'm glad. And, oh, yeah, Tijul, you have to tell me when you're going to stream so I can watch. <laughs> what color is Christina's eyes? Uh, they're, oh. You don't have references for me. Pudding. Oh, okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Blue. <clears throat> Blue. 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 Um, okay, so then we're going to get into the next one, which was, what time have you felt most like a failure? Um... Definitely right after college. I, you know, you go from being in college where everyone's telling you what to do, you have projects laid out, you're just kind of just letting other people tell you what to do in college. Um, because once you leave college, you're kind of your own boss now. You have to tell yourself what you're going to be doing every day. And I ended up spending a good... Um, year and a half after college not doing anything because I felt so lost. I didn't have anything or anyone telling me what to do. I didn't have any motivation. I had no idea where my life was going to go because I didn't have any plans. Um, but yeah, that was the time when I felt like I was a failure and didn't have anything to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that's been a similar thing I've noticed with people coming right out of, right out of college. The first year usually is the most rough. Yeah. And it, it's especially what Key was just saying, and then not having, or and then if you get a job, you think that that will solve a lot of your yeah. problems. But then you find this whole new lifestyle that you have to adapt to, where it's like nine to five, five days a week. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a lot of your free time, your freedom because, in general, is taken yeah, away. Yeah, because then you're like, all right, I'm out of college, and then you're like looking at jobs, and you're like, is is this what I want to do? Is this something that I, I want to do for the rest of my life? And it becomes really um, intimidating to want to try something new because, or to like try to jump into something and then realizing this isn't actually what I want. And yeah. then you're stuck. And that was probably the biggest thing I was scared of. So I feel like it's kind of cool seeing the new come full circle where now you're an independent artist, you don't have to work a nine to five, mm -hmm. and you get to draw what you want, pick the jobs you want, and support yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The last one on the hard hitting ones are how do you personally utilize your own failure? Um, I learn from them. I like I'll I will trip on them when I fail. And the thing is though when I fail is I have to keep going, I have to keep walking forward. I can't stumble I can't fall over um and I have to learn from okay why did I trip why did this happen I have to critically analyze everything um in every moment that I failed and in times when you fail and um it's not like a big deal I still think it's important to be like okay maybe I'm not doing as good as maybe I thought I was so you just keep pushing yourself and learn from every single little mistake. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, let's see here. Brandon paints us to quote Beyonce. Oh, well, my aspiration in life would be to be happy. Yeah. Always how I viewed success. Yeah. Um, Christy says, I'm currently in college, and one thing that scares me is my parents getting upset with my older brother because he's not in college. Mm -hmm. And my parents always will say, well, at least you're in college, Christy. So post-college freaks me out. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a lot of pressure. On, that's too on much parents. pressure, honestly. I, I don't like your parents who are like, you have to do this because this is the right thing for you. And blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's what parents do because they just want the best for you. Yeah. It's like they... It's, it sounds bad, but it's really coming off of fear because they love you and they want you to be okay after they're gone. Right. Uh, but I think with post-college, it's something that I'm even now conditioning my younger brothers or my younger cousins. There's three of them, and they're going through college now, and one of them is getting ready for college. And I'm just kind of letting them know, hey, right after college, you'll probably kind of hit this roadblock and just know it's normal. All of my friends went through it. I went through it. And you hit this kind of, not full depression, but you feel pretty down. And yeah. I'd say the days become kind of hard. And you really have to talk yourself up some nights. And even some nights, are it's hard to go to bed, even. It's hard to fall asleep because you're thinking about it constantly. And then the questions of, like, is what I want to be doing the rest of my life. Is this it? Is this, is this all I'm going to be doing the rest of my life until I die is working a job from 9 to 5, 5 days a week? So just know post-college there is something, and I think it would be bad if I try to sugarcoat it and I try to say, no, you'll be fine. No, I, I really do yeah. think everyone kind of hits a post-college point in their life where it it's heavy, you know? Mm. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, why well, thank you new swak c2 for following uh da -da -da. yeah you can definitely taking private art mentorships after college will help at mm -hmm. least if you want some of that um lesson based type learning and you like having someone else who is more experienced sharing their knowledge and having it in a structured manner that will help you grow and learn? Right. In hindsight, I kind of wish I didn't go to college because I feel like there's so many opportunities now outside of college for artists specifically oh, yeah. that, I mean, are actually probably better than going to a college where, um, you know, you can find a mentor who would make it one-on-one -on -one so they can be directly focused on you instead of like 15 different students in a class. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I'm not going to Okay, talk I think I got... Him. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> record! <laughs> record! Record! He's like, now I can focus. Yeah. Well, thankfully, you have... Okay, so you have like 10 minutes left. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> How much can you get done in 10 minutes? Not a whole lot. Oh, yes. Key is working with gouache. Yeah. And I have no idea what I'm doing, so here we go. <laughs> uh, Surat says, oh. key, those colors. Golden fridge, golden fridge, golden fridge. Golden fridge, golden fridge. Thank you. It's the paint. It's not me. I don't know what the paint's doing. I'm just agreeing with it. <laughs> Sound like pooey. <laughs> the paint muses yeah. are guiding me. I feel like with digital, there's filters and stuff, but with traditional paints... Um, they have their own things where they, they'll they blend for you. So they kind of do a lot of the work in the same regards as like filters on the computer. I don't know. It's, yeah. They have their own strengths and you kind of just have to learn how to work with them. And that's something especially that I'm still learning. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, guys, if you have any questions for Kiki, now's the time to ask. <clears throat> You know why? I think it's because everyone will usually like tangent from yeah. their questions yeah. where you're like two oh. sentences done. I don't know. It's easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. <laughs> I will say. We need an outside third party. Key, there was one time where I asked her, I was like, Key, how do you do your thumbnails? How do you do thumbnails? And she was like, I just make little boxes and put pictures in them. <laughs> Yeah. That's exactly what she said, and that's exactly what I needed to hear. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Key's, a, I think, very direct with her things. I think that's why I usually go... I mean, 
I think the roommates know this. I usually go to Key for critiques on stuff. And I think it's because not only do we have a similar taste level, but she kind of gives it to me pretty cold, but in a way where I know it's helpful and in a way that I know that the advice she's giving me is good advice and she's not just like pulling my string for no reason. Yeah, this is this is great and this is wonderful and this is perfect and but actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lucid Harmony. Oh wait. John the Studio says, Hey guys, hope you're well. Happy to catch the show. Well hi, thanks for catching the show. Hello. Um did you do? Lucid Harmony says, As a new artist, any suggestions for specific books or educational resources on getting better? Thanks to anyone there to be honest. That's to anyone there, to be honest. Uh, YouTube. Psychra. Uh, Tim and um, some Noah Bradley videos were some really good stuff. I would say if you're going to go online, I mean, obviously, CG Cookie is the yeah. job I work for, but then the ones that I personally watch, I really like Cynix's videos, and more than anyone, I would say Bobby Chu has been, like, my number one to go to, because he doesn't teach art he teaches how to be in the right mindset to do art. Mm -hmm. And I think out of anything, that's the most important thing yeah. for an artist because technical <clears throat> skills can be learned. But having the right like mindset, that's something that you kind of have to teach yourself and no one can tell you how to do it because everyone's life is different. So one artist might have a completely different experience than you. So having their advice, it might not actually relate to you or be relevant to your lifestyle. So I, I would definitely recommend Bobby Chu's videos, especially the ones on uh, making it as an independent artist, the ones on social media. And I think that my favorite was the the traps that artists find themselves in. I think it was the five tips to that artist, or something with traps that artists fall in. I thought that was a really good video. That's and then true. if you're looking, I guess, for more technical ones, who Proko, I think his anatomy ones are great. Uh, God, there's so many... Uh, then you know what I stumble upon random ones where their technical skills might not be the greatest but what they're saying is do what they say not as they do yeah exactly where like they have the right knowledge I just don't think they put in the practice yet to showcase that knowledge properly so you never know who could be a great teacher for you uh, Jonas Goonface says she's very kinesh <laughs> or kin kiss Keen size. Yeah. Oh, it's like quinoa. Quinoa? Quinoa. Uh, Tigel says, often when you go through a big success in your art career, outsiders like non-art friends or parents don't get it. How do you deal with that? Oh, I oh, definitely feel this. I don't really bother. <laughs> like, I'll tell my dad. He won't, like, <laughs> he's not going to give me a pat on the back or whatever. He'll just be like, okay, cool. And, like, they we don't just know. continue the conversation. Um... I don't know. I think it's better to find people that do know and I get it. Yeah, that get it. Um, yeah. I guess like a good example is uh, earlier this year, Key got runner up for the Spectrum Award for a rising star, I believe. And I mean, I'm assuming if you told people that, they might be like, okay, I can kind of understand rising star, what that means, but um, I don't understand what Spectrum is. Right. I don't understand how you got in a award show for an art person anyways. So, like, there's a lot of questions that they'll raise in their head and they just don't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. But then if you tell pretty much anyone in the ho our house, like, we would understand immediately how big of a, a deal that is and yeah. why that... Yeah, it's like the Oscars for artists, essentially. Uh, and the second question was, how... Oh, how do you... Oh, no, no, you didn't answer that. Never mind. Lucid Harmony says, thank you very much. I've got them bookmarked now. Mm. Cheers looking that up. Well, Yay. awesome. Uh, Bland says, any tips on material about color theory? Oh, man. <laughs> I never owned a book on color theory. Ever? No. Oh, I don't I own a lot of books. I guess that's true. I, all my resources for learning, I mean, I grew up on the internet, so everything I've ever learned basically came on, came from the internet. Um, so, uh, one of the big ones that I really liked growing up was 
uh, was it Glitched Puppets color tutorial? Oh yeah, that's really good. Uh, that one's great. I forgot. I don't know how old that thing is. That one's really old. Because yeah. I saw that when I was first year of college, so at least eight yeah. years. But like, I really looked at that when I was younger, and I haven't looked at it in a long time. But a lot of those things still stuck with me. I think the most prominent one that people talk about are James Gurney's Color and Light book. Mm -hmm. That one was my basis when I did the color course on CG Cookie, and I attribute a lot of what I learned to teach it from that book. So I think that one was great. Uh, to do. Uh, Ellis Q says, has she met Feverworm? They have very similar styles. Oh, we have not met yet. Someday. Someday. <laughs> Clover... <laughs> Ken wants Tim and Jonas to fight in the yard. What? Uh, Jonas says, Tim would beat the tar out of me, and I would love that. <laughs> Guy, I am not a fighter. <laughs> I'll fight the loser. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to make them feel better? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of meat on these bones. I, I can't pack much of a punch. Tim is supposed to be lighter on the top and darker on the bottom. Yeah. I hacked it up. It's okay. I'm you can just, make that work. I can make it work. Make it work. Make it work. I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go. <laughs> Chibi says, I still have to explain to all my art friends and family, or to one of my friends and family, what an art tablet is. Oh. I have given up in a lot of regards. My mom still tells people I do animation like Shrek, and I'm like, not mm. quite. It's become easier, I guess, in the last two years because now I gave her a book. So I'm like, here, if people ask, here is a book that you can just show them. <laughs> It'll make it easier to understand. Because I think in the art world, uh, we have the luxury of just I just don't bother just asking or explaining anything. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's just, just like, you're vague. an artist, cool. Yeah, thanks, Dan. But your dad knows that you're able to support yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, like, the most important thing to him, so, like, every detail doesn't really matter. Actually, that's true. Like, even if your parents don't understand, as long as you're able to support yourself, they don't really care, as long as you're able to make it on your own and uh, what you're doing what you love and you're able to support yourself from that. Yeah. Uh, Miss Chibi says, Key, I find it so awesome that your traditional and digital painting styles are so much the same. It's so unique, and it carries over in both mediums. I appreciate it. Yeah, I feel like the way I do digital is traditionally based because, I mean, we had to do some traditional painting classes and a lot of the art that I really, really enjoy is traditional. Um, I've, I don't really have any sort of attachment or uh, admiration for the newer digital art mm. styles. Um, but that's just all taste, so that's just me. Um, but yeah, that's why my art's probably more traditional looking, and it makes it a little easier for me to learn, um, how to work with these sort of things. Yeah. Uh, Lucid Harmony says, what sort of drawing, painting, animation, or whatever are you happiest doing? Drawing, painting, what? Uh, animation, or whatever, are you happiest doing? Oh, like... What medium am I happiest doing? Yeah. Or, like, what type of work are you happiest doing? I'm happy doing... Um, Four-legged creatures. Four-legged <laughs> creatures. I really like drawing unicorns. Those are kind of my therapeutic sort of things. Um, I really like putting patterns and stuff in my work because, you know, like, in middle school and stuff, you like to put them swirls in your agenda. And in a way... <laughs> <laughs> that's like you my swirls in your agenda I, 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 yeah man i put swirls in my agenda i just drew them little loopy swirls and because it was like the thing everyone did it but i just feel like with my art i just took it farther <laughs> 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 and now all these weird patterns are in my art because it's, it's fun i like to work on stuff that makes me want to engage in my work more i don't want to draw something that's super realistic or something that would just bore me to death while I'm working on it. I always like to treat a, what I'm working on as like a sort of adventure thing where, you know, like with this piece, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm <laughs> doing, but I'm enjoying it because it's the process where instead of doing step one, step two, step three, 
I'm just kind of going all over the place and letting my hand and brain wander rather than following the step-by-step -step yeah. boring process. Okay, you got one more minute left. Oh, no. Is there any last thing that you would want to say about success and failure that you'd like them to know? Um... I don't know. This is so vague. I can't answer vague questions. <laughs> All right, let me get specific. Let's see here. Tyler never fails. Tyler never Tyler fails. Never fails. <laughs> I love him. Um, okay, I got a question for you. Okay. From Tim. Oh, boy. Uh, what new successes are you planning to achieve for yourself in the future? Um, I want to be able to spend more time working on art. While I do love my lifestyle currently, I feel like I'm overworking myself where I'm not giving myself any enough time to work on my own stuff. I'm spending days where I'm prepping for cons and... Um, working on some freelance stuff so I can afford the next con that's coming up or, you know, it's always, I'm always pouring money into my ability to continue my lifestyle. Um, that's not really letting me <laughs> uh, work on art as much. So I just really want to work on art more for the most part. Yeah. And that would be my goal. I feel like that's a good goal. Simple, but Simple effective. and effective. All right, well, that's it. We got through all six roommates today. Wow. And we all were all in different areas. We left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for coming to this live stream. This is a special one because we passed the 2,500 goal. I'm coming back. And <laughs> oh, Sean's, Sean's coming back. back. Um, <laughs> And the next one will be after we pass 3,000. As you can see, we're already getting closer to it uh, just because this one was a little delayed. So thank you guys so much for coming to this. I had a lot of fun. I <laughs> I'm gwashing it up. I really enjoy my roommate, so having them oh, online, <laughs> I think, uh, with me doing these, I think is fun. So thank you guys again for making this happen. Don't forget, if you are curious about the contest and you weren't here in the beginning, it is launching tomorrow. And I'm not joking this time. I know I keep saying it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Coming but it's actually coming tomorrow. And I, I know that for a fact. So uh, hopefully that intrigues you. And you should definitely check it out. The prizes are doubled. I have 10 guest judges on this one. And some of them are, have some big names behind their their name. They have some their beef, some weight behind their, their name. And I definitely think beef. this is one worth checking out. Beef. And then also... Actually, no, I think that's all the announcements I had for Cookie. Oh, no, there is one more. Uh, I'm doing a community critique stream every Wednesday night in September. So if you are curious about getting your stuff critiqued from me, uh, you just go to the link I put below, and it's for the pro members on the site, and I will give you a 20-minute critique on whatever piece you submit. So I guess I just want to say thanks again to my roommates. Only three, three of us are here, but... I'm still painting. Thank you, guys! And then... Uh, I guess. Hopefully we'll see you next Thanks. week. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.